Welcome. Oh. Yeah, I know. Sorry. No, no, no. No worries. Nick was peeing. Yeah, I was. <laughs> so welcome to RCR After Dark. We have yet to check mics. Yeah. As we get started. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. As we get started here, we um, uh, I have my dinner cooking in the other room. Oh, you need to adjust this. Oh, line. yeah. I need to. A... Oh, ooh, 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 eh, 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 eh. There we go. Oh, Burgundy Burnout's already showing us up with the Super Chat immediately for $2. Yes, you are first. I feel Thank like, you. Oh, sorry. I feel like in the future, we are going to have to, like, restrict the, like, if you want to donate and tip us, cool. But if you want to tip us to answer a question, to save it to a specific part of the podcast so that we can get through whatever our stories are and also answer like non monetized questions from the live chat. Yeah. But it's kind of weird because it's hard to like say no to all that money. Right. Uh, <laughs> like, do, do you really want to get in your own way? Do I really want to get in my own way? Yeah. And no, no one does. Uh, so but, we're, we're still, we're still testing the mics. How do we sound here? Yeah. How's all this? Um, our so mics far? are, uh, are, are matched now. Hey. As in, uh, like, uh, his, Nick's mic and my mic are at the same level, and I'm on yeah. pot one, and he's on pot two. Normally, it's switched. He's on pot one. I'm on pot two. Um, let me make the text bigger. Control plus. No, it's not it. Function plus. Alt plus? Yeah. I'm not entirely plus. certain how things work. There oh, go. there we go. He said the mics are good good okay good oh and i have this on i'm not like trying to show off or anything gym wise it's just really hot in here but not as hot as that first week in new zealand so i can deal it's yeah. not a problem um the reason it's warm in here is because i'm still cooking my dinner and i have my air conditioner is in my bedroom so bedroom pennsylvania pennsylvania um uh so i have my fan in my window acting as exhaust and my dinner's still cooking so we're gonna get down to drinking uh yeah we're gonna be with you at least for two hours yeah and um i bought it oh sorry go ahead no i bought a glenn livet 12 uh i was well i had bought this back in like december because i was gonna like uh take it up but to i was visiting a friend and was gonna share it with a friend and then i forgot to bring it with and so uh could you close that please um and basically i completely forgot that i still had this and so i'm like this is a better way to use it to mm -hmm. inaugurate our inaugural after dark podcast right. and i don't know why i'm looking down there instead of looking over there uh it's a i gotta get into the habit but also what's funny is that um brian doesn't have any uh like whiskey glass like no, drink, for drinking booze no. so we're drinking out of these bad boys right here we're drinking so, out of my coffee mugs yeah oh ooh. so so what kind of uh is this a whiskey? Is this a bourbon? It's what a blended it? scotch. Oh, no. It's a single malt scotch whiskey. Damn. It's delightful. Uh, oh, you're going hard, yeah, man. Well, no, it's that. I'm going to be sipping on that for a while. The Glen Levitt. <laughs> yeah. Man. Aged for 12 long years. Damn, forged son. when the world was young and bird and beast and flower were mm. one with the world and death was but a dream. Nice. Uh, yeah. In 1824, George Smith established his distillery. Alex oh. Landers, hello from Tampa. Just bought a 71 Roadrunner with a 440 big block Chrysler swap. Love your content. Thanks for. Oh, oh let me. Oh, there we go. Already. Oh, 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 oh alcohol oh, that's right. Here's what you do. You hand me the cork. Cork. There we go. There we go. I'm already like getting this. He even gave me like a very specific wooden. Um, thing to put the the mug booze but he's, on hey it's philip han philip han, hey. philip han with the gold wing you remember philip han we reviewed his gold wing yes mugs to drink scotch that's class this is how i drink throughout my holidays with the family you never think this is booze no well i mean because um you know oh that is so nice yeah really it's it would make some nice boiler. And it's going on an empty stomach. In the other room, I have uh, in room in the kitchen. My, my dinner is cooking, so at some point, I'm gonna have to run away. Anyway, Alex Landers, thanks for five bucks, man. Hello from Tampa. Just bought a '71 Roadrunner with a 440 
uh, block Chrysler Swap. You love your confidence. Thanks for all the great work. Oh, thanks, man. You're hey. just tipping us five dollars. Thanks, man. Yeah. We saw some uh, a two dollar one go by. Oh, uh, he was asking what was better, Winga Dinger or Wampa Dampa? Oh shit, son. Yeah, it's that's kind of a loaded question. A little bit in the sense that it's hard to really know. It all comes down to personal preference. And, Wampa Dampa yeah. guys are nicer to you than Winga Dinga guys. Because anybody can buy just a late 60s something and then go get your Summit Racing catalog and there's everything you need. Wampa Dampa is like pre-war stuff and you got to be committed to this. Um, got to be the, all in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the thing about Wampa Dampa guys is they don't really talk to Winga Dinga guys. Wampa Dampa pre-war and um, looking at you, Justin Lowe's in your 1925 Model T. Maybe Model Ts are different than other ones because Model Ts are their own subset of a subset. Mm. But usually the guys with Wampa Dampa cars, pre-war stuff, like I'm I'm thinking like, yeah, pre-war War II cars. Um, they... Uh, they're very specific. They don't mod their machines. Oh, and the second you mod a Wampa Dampa, it becomes Winga Dinga. <laughs> the second you swap a motor and you put a Chevy small block into your, like, 49 Ford. Wait, I got that straight from Back to the Future 2. He's in a 49 Ford. We're in a Mercury. Or is it 48 Ford? Anyway, oh, I can't even... the, the, second, the second you engine swap with a, with a, uh, with a Chevy small block or a or a Ford or a Ford small block, a Wampa Dampa becomes a Winga Dinga. Um, the uh, we have a question of what are you making for dinner? <laughs> Since your dinner yeah, is ground actually... ground beef, onions, uh, steamed vegetables, rice. Randy Bish, four twenty. Uh, Randy's a friend of mine. Actually, uh, we both know Randy from. Uh, we went to remember that one time where we drove that uh, we did a point of view video on I forget what, but we were sitting at a stoplight and we started singing Cats in the Cradle. Yeah. And Randy was like in was the that, car. Was that in Pittsburgh? Yeah, it was in Pittsburgh. Okay. And so like I kept in touch with Randy and he's uh, he's great. So, um, yeah, good to hear from you, Randy. There was another person up top who uh, donated just two dollars and then their message just said three like period zero zero. So that was the comment, oh, three, but the three. donation was $2. Oh, so, but Hey, you. thank you for any thank little you. bit. And thank you, Jarrett Lorenzen for $20. Love this channel. Damn it. Take my money. I, uh, well, thanks man. There was an Australian who said, can you explain the difference between Winga Ding and Wampa Dampa? Okay. Wampa Dampa easy. It's any car pre World war two, 1942 and earlier. I mean, yes, there were cars that were made during the forties, but Wampa Dampa is your car with the expo with the freestanding headlights, big fender flares. Um, you got a straight six. You have a reverse flow head. You maybe have a water pump. You know. Like if you look at a car and it, and it makes that song in your head, it's a Wampa Dampa. Winga Dinga is any classic American car, uh, nineteen uh, like like nineteen fifty two to nineteen. Uh, re, winga Dinga 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 Nineteen fifty two nineteen. I, I want to say like 19, 1982, because some of the 70s and GM stuff stuck around, around. 1952, 1982, American big boat thing. Yes. Uh, there was a question there of um, from Michael Aquaviva, um, manufacturers, and it just disappeared. I will go right to it right now. All right. Uh, manufacturers should bring back radiator gauge hood ornaments. Thoughts? I'm against it. I'm against hood ornaments of any kind. I mean, it kind of encourages vandalism, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, in a weird way. Uh, oh, the age is gone. That's how yeah. you know it's a Honda. Yeah. Um, so what comes after Winga Dinga? I don't know. Whatever 80s is. Beeping, booping. <laughs> I got to go check on my meat. Be right back. So there was a question earlier that to the effect of... Um, should I be honest? Should I buy automation? And my answer is, of course, because it's kind of a game that isn't really out there for automotive enthusiasts before or since. And uh, I think it's more worthwhile than like my summer car, which is a fine game. It's just kind of once you've done it, 
you've done it, you know? Um, but yeah. Oh, geez. I go to, the, I go to check on my, <laughs> you go to, and I know a whole bunch of literally 15 seconds you were gone. And, uh, here I'll, I'll pull it up on my phone so you don't have to scroll back up, but, uh, oh, I can see the time limit here. Here we go. I have to answer these questions. It's going to start with the one that's done. Uh, come to Wisconsin, review my BMW K 1200 mm. man of taste. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Carl Reinke. Reinke for $5. Toy Box Car Club is the next. Okay. Toy Box Car Club. Thank you for five bucks, man. Thank you. So Ford Nationals, think I could meet you tomorrow. I have a Fox and a, a 15 Mustang at the show. Yeah, just come, come, us, come and find us at the Falcon. I'm also bringing my Kelty Exodus 2 tent that I got <laughs> on an REI fire sale. Do you know where we're going to be set up? With the rest of the Falcons. Oh, all right, like, cool. Th- there's a Falcon area, and there's always extra room. Yeah. Yeah. Always extra room because Fal- the Falcon community is small in the United States. So I kind of have an idea where they're going to stick us. It's going to be... If they if they stick the Falcons in the same place they did next year, it's going to be kind of behind the operations building. But um, uh, I'll be asked to park with the rest of the Falcons. Uh, the Falcon section, and we're gonna wake up tomorrow. Nick is sleeping over here tonight. We're gonna wake up when we ever wake up, and just hit the road and, yeah. and go to Carlisle. So yeah, come say hi. Oh, well, I'm gonna set up my tent behind the Falcon, and if it's like really rains, like it's supposed to tomorrow, it's like come in my tent. Yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to thunderstorm, but it was supposed to thunderstorm today, and nothing happened. Right? It was a beautiful day all day. Uh, Michael Wise gave us 99 cents. Thank you. Put that to good use at Dollar General. Yeah. You guys are the best. Keep up the brown, says Randy Buxell. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Hey. Uh, Tom Jefferson, review my Vespa P200 or Jeep Liberty CRD. What is CRD? No idea. Got to send an email. Send it to the regular cars at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, Car and location in the subject heading. And hopefully, you know, we can make things work and, you know, things. Have you ever guys had a car break down or a fender bender during a review? Yes and yes. Yeah, the bolt. Not including the Holden from New Zealand. Uh, yes. Um, one time, the owner of a K-Van, which I mistakenly call a key van. Uh, French Canadian here. Love your vids. Hey. You know, we actually started getting uh, RCR Canada together today. We, uh, I, I got some ideas together. But anyway, mm. we'll talk about that later. Yeah. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Fender Bender that happened on screen. Uh, Jay Tovey says, thank you for $5 Australian, I think. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Roman. Roman bes- oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. Hey, Roman, besides cars, what is your favorite other form of transportation? Um, Walking, uh, like Christopher. I, I, Because I don't ride uh, motorcycles, and I'm um, not really that uh, adept at other things, like riding bicycles. So, I don't know. I walk places, and, you know, it's good for you. Um, I hate running, but I mean, I need to get my cardio game up. So, um, I love running. Yeah. Th- yeah. That, that's where we're super, uh, different, but yeah. So there was the K van was the fender bender and then the bolt broke down. Was it a bolt? The, 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 yeah, yeah. Chevy yeah. Chevy bolt. It bricked. It yeah. Blue it just screened. blue screen of death. Um, and so, yeah, it was just kind of a weird um, thing. Uh, and yes, I still to people um, asking, I still do have my SN95 uh, Mustang. Foreign money, says uh, N Camer. Well, D- how much D-K-K-K? is DKK? Department yeah. like Democratic Korea something? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, I love how kind of uh, um, like now that I have like a gym membership and I'm like watching my weight and starting to wear this, like I'm looking more and more like a typical like Mustang owner. Uh, so I, I'm just kind of uh, life humans and such. Um, let me see the person who, or let's see Cole Donnelly. Thank you for the $10. Uh, hey. so, sorry for the heavy question, but do y'all have any advice for somebody going through their first breakup? Um, yeah. I was, I was kind of like going through something similar to this not too long ago. And it felt like a first breakup because I hadn't allowed myself to like, kind of feel that way in a long time. And what 
I basically did was I started going out like more because once you get over that initial period where all you want to do is sleep and all you want to do is like be miserable, like you kind of want to stew in it. Uh, the more you once you get past that, you can realize like, hey, I need to get out here. I got to be drinking whiskey. I got to be out here like slinging dick with three hands. Joey Diaz <laughs> style. Like we got to make this thing happen. Oh, and be out there. You're going to be slinging dick and passing out chopsticks. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what you need to do. Oh, I have. I'm sorry. Oh, go I have for a Joe, Joey Diaz line that I heard one day. Uh, oh, it's a positive one. Yeah. It's just, who gives a fuck what's, who's running things? At the end of the day, you're running things. Exactly. And But how about you? How's the sort of... What is romance anyway? You know, it's... Jeez, uh, a- after breakups and letdowns and turndowns, it... Uh, I knew intellectually that this too shall pass. Mm-hmm. And I feel shitty now, and I'm gonna feel cr- I'm gonna feel horrible for a week. The week after that, it's not gonna be so bad. It's gonna be a dull ache for about a month, and after two months, I'm gonna feel all right. Yeah. Um. Like I feel all right, but if. I can't say with 100% certainty that, like, I'm over it and that I don't still think about her and that I don't still, like, have dreams. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, it's been, like, a couple months, but... Oh, yeah. Actually, no, it's been, like... It's... it's, Yeah, it's been a couple months. But, like, the whole point is that, like, there will come a point in time where the the hurt kind of, you know... It's it's like a bullet wound that gets excised out of your body with Mm. a knife that you know you still have the scar not to sound like a taylor swift lyric but whatever <laughs> we need to answer this one will robinson thanks for five bucks will danger would you guys hey. Hey. would you guys drive the alcan or dalton highway goes from fairbanks to the arctic in the falcon if not what stock car would you drive in it i'm open to the idea of driving the alcan highway from uh you know seattle to anchor <sighs> my, my old roommate Tyler Grimm did that in a Toyota Tacoma, the very same one we reviewed in the in the early days of RCR. He drove the Alcan Highway in that uh, Toyota Tacoma with the SR5 in it. Um, it's it's a no joke road, and I think the Falcon would be a bad choice because that thing doesn't have a far range. You know, that's a ten gallon, that's a five liter engine being fed from a ten gallon tank. Uh, you need something with like a 24 gallon tank to drive the Alcan. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Thank you. Christopher S says, Oh, we have a bunch of tens. We did. Sorry for the heavy question. That was the break. Oh yeah. Yeah. Shout out from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Hey, Hey. you ever go to the bond place in Bethlehem? I love that place. Uh, I have a good friend, uh, Carrie Klakowitz. Uh, She knows the owner goes to the bond place all the time. Shout out from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. When are the Falcon cooling issues going to be repaired? Um, I don't know. It's we're watching it. Um, see, the Falcon really only has cooling issues in July and August. <laughs> After that, it's fine. I drove through. I drove the Falcon today. A bunch of shuttle runs for the AT through hikers. We went through the uh, uh, a Taco Bell drive through. Now I was running running the electric fan. I was had the heater on, <laughs> and the temperature stayed at one ninety, so that was good. Yeah. Um, what the Falcon needs, I still haven't spaced the hood. That's going to be one thing. Space the hood. Um, bigger radiator. Space the hood. Bigger radiator. That's when, but you're asking when. I, I don't know when. It, it's it's a problem, but it's not a detrimental one. Uh, it's just you can't creep through traffic in that thing. That's just the only problem the car has. Um, doesn't it just need a larger radiator fan and shrouding? Yes, sounds relatively cheap and easy fix. Yes, it is a re- relatively simple fix. All cars need, they all custom cars need bigger radios. It's just a thing, but. Since the Falcon is winged dinga style, I only drive it now and again, and there isn't really traffic here in the middle of nowhere, PA, that I can get away with that. And on really hot days, I don't drive it. I ride my motorcycle. Thanks for the 10 bucks, man. Um, the actual Team Ryan says, thoughts on a cheap bicycle engine kits that seem to be everywhere now. 
Gosh, man, I, I thanks for the ten bucks, but I don't know how how to answer that question because I've never messed with those things. You gotta you gotta go as uh, Gregory Lee from Possum Springs. What he thinks about yeah. uh, um, uh, engine kits like that. Um, I wonder if some two dollar ones went by in the background. We oh, I uh, have been screenshotting on my phone some of the ones because there was okay. one from Burgundy Burnouts who asked uh, our thoughts on the Oxford comma. Like, yes or no? Look, the internet doesn't care, <laughs> but we are not the New York Times. The New York Times doesn't do the Oxford comma. If you're writing from them, use it or don't use it. Yeah. But if, if you have a bunch of things in series in a sentence and you need to make sure that everything that that the reader needs to know everything in that series, you have blah, comma, block, comma, block comma and that yeah yeah now if you're writing a literature paper it, well now it depends on the professor yeah yeah because you don't know if they want mla or right. apa or some other like antiquated um non-existent form that they haven't used since you were using stone tablets you know right um when i teach english i say don't use it you don't need it you don't and, need the comma before the end. Yeah, I don't really use it. No, anyway, it's so. reflexive that I don't use it. Yeah. Um, and it seems weird when I do. It seems unnecessary because the and itself de denotates that break. Uh, greetings. Um, good evening from Alberta. First time donating. Love the channel. How sketchy is buying a car for sight unseen? Very sketchy, man. You never yeah. buy a car sight unseen. Yeah, but he's saying specifically a first car sight unseen which almost makes it even more dangerous because the implication is that you're gonna be you, rooked man yeah you don't know exactly what to look for and what tells are of someone who's trying to rook you yeah you know and trying to scam you out of all the money and it's the little things that they don't tell you about as you're you know sort of driving off the lot things that are going to become problems later whether it's rust whether it's a weird like fan issue or anything else uh greetings from Coldwater, Ohio, listening from our church summer festival. Summer, oh, church Bible camp. Oh uh, no! I'll make a drink. I'll make to. I'll, I'll make to drink a few beers for you guys. Oh, thanks, man. Well, that's and that's an okay summer festival if you can get lit. Yeah, tell me about it. Shots for Jesus. Uh, have what's this? This one is buying a 2005 Mercury Grand Marquis tomorrow. Thoughts on a sleeper build? It's been done, but do it because um, you have you have a world of options out there. Thoughts on a sleeper build? Turbo LS. There are so many sloppy sloppy Panther bodies out there that are running Turbo LSs and they kick fucking ass. <laughs> going to the Pittsburgh. I'm answering the ones that are almost going to go away. Uh, going to the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Thanks for the th five bucks, Ethan. Hoping to get my Saab 900 there, but the transmission is currently in pieces. Well, that sucks, man. Pittsburgh. Am I not? I'm not going to the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Love to, but there's a lot of car shows and stuff to do because it's summertime now. There was a question somewhere around here that someone's in Carlisle right now watching this. Yeah, but I can't remember. Oh, uh, did I'm, he go away? I'm screenshotting some of the uh, these uh, after the um, vintage Grand Prix. It was from uh, 750 from Sean Brewer, who says, "I live in a mountainous area and want a project. Should I get an MX-5 and turbo it, or buy a four x four Tercel for Ooh. off road trails and drop a two ZZ in it?" I you'd be, I don't know who does a 2ZZ. Are you going to do a 2ZZ and keep it four-wheel drive? I mean, you'd get on Jalopnik really quick with that move. Yeah, you would. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for a 750, man. Thank you. I'm all, I'm all for the Tercel, man. There, there, there's turbo MX-5s all today, but if you run into, like, those 4x4 four four Tercels, badass. It's weird. Like, after watching uh, All Cars Go to Heaven, like, the first one, like, I kind of wanted a Tercel. Yeah, because they got they got that for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, and that thing w yeah, was the only car, car survive that survived that insane trip that they went on. Yeah, they had the they were trying to break it. Yeah, Shades of Cassade says, 
have you ever been asked to use Chicago or Turian style? I forget one professor wanted Chicago or like explained what it was and wanted no. us to write some in Chicago, but the short answer is no. No, at that point, I just flip them off. And <laughs> like you can, you can, <laughs> you can get a dick in the ear or something. Okay. Um, Hold on to, or maybe you can answer those questions. I got to yeah. go check on my meat again. Well, I got to go. <laughs> it has two meanings. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me see where I, I have some questions that were saved in the snap that are not um super chat questions because i want to answer some things that aren't necessarily super chat related one of them was when are episodes 29 and 30 of the podcast going on the shout engine now see normally that's my responsibility but what happened was is that in order to use the shout engine page i have to be signed into the regular cars twitter account and for some reason like now due to location it's locking me out of the regular cars twitter account so i have to they have they send a verification code to brian but then Brian has to send the verification code to me within like 15 minutes. And normally like our times aren't synced up well enough for me to do this. So like for the past two weeks, I've been able to put the podcast up that and like the two the number 29 and 30 were kind of like impromptu podcasts. So I didn't like know about them, which isn't a problem. Like that's great. You know, we putting out content, whatever. It's fantastic. And Joe Rogan is on like four times a week. So who really cares? But, uh, basically uh after this i'm probably gonna like rip the audio off of those podcasts and put them on the shout engine so that along with this one so that they all go up immediately right away um and uh yeah the the uh let's see um like I forgot to oh i forgot to hit record on the zoom h4 and i can take it off the you too. All right. Sorry to make extra work for you. Now. No, it doesn't really bother me. Um, let's I'm see. Closing the windows now. Now we can have the the AC going again. Um, other questions. Oh, what are your guys' take on NASCAR? Oh, but first, uh. Um, to those who are uh, just to reiterate why I'm not wearing a shirt is because it's hot as balls in here. Uh, so that like this, I'm not trying to show off. I'm literally trying to kind of like, you know, keep from melting like the wicked witch of the West. In a second now I opened the door to my bedroom. Yeah. And, uh, whoop. but, uh, this, uh, Magnus Anderson, great name. What are, what's your guys take on nascar um i don't really kind of i get it but i don't get it um i mean it takes an it takes an immense amount of skill to be able to do it because like i don't believe in the um reductionist viewpoint that uh it's literally just driving left all the time like it's way more complicated than that like it's kind of like saying that pro wrestling is just ballet. It's not like you're going to be having hip problems in your 60s if you're lucky enough to make it that far. But it's, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, other things. And then uh, last one before we get back to other things. Um, well, actually, I don't know what else. Uh, there was one from one guy that I really wanted to find. Uh, Where to go? Where to go? Um, uh, what's the longest road trip you take the Falcon on? Or that you would take the Falcon on? In its current state? In its current state. Pittsburgh. Hmm. Um, with the radiate, with a new radiator and everything else, Toronto. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Uh, what, Wyatt Faulkner, another amazing name. Uh, what's the most expensive vehicle you have reviewed? Um, it's gotta be that, uh, the, the Rolls Royce the the one in the uk yeah technically that was a review that was a rolls royce yeah I, it was a point of view so yeah. but still it was um that was a rolls royce wraith that would be the most expensive uh car if you want a full review i think it's the callaway i think it's the chevy hmm. callaway um, or corvette callaway yeah because yeah. that was super expensive um emilio guajardo Oh, wait, no, he are, we already answered that one. Uh, that uh, Hat Tree asks, um, I always wonder why you guys think the K car is so great. Um, did we answer the J Tory? Do you believe the idea of driving a oh, slow no, car that's fast a new one. is more fun than fast car fast? Yeah, All right. slow car fast is way more fun than fast car fast. And I will have videos of me at Harris Hill having way more fun in a slow car driving around that than I am in a fast car. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you for your question. Thank you for five bucks. Yeah, slow car fast is always better than fast car fast. Uh, Mike Pasarchik asks, I guess Chrysler is rumored to be on the deathbed, huh? Which, I mean, they've been rumored to be on the deathbed since around 2004 or 2006 or so. I mean, ever since kind of the Sebring came out and everybody took a hot dump on that one mm -hmm. um, because they had this mistaken notion that it was going to be something that could potentially buoy the brand the brand oh no my brand uh but yeah cable news network <laughs> cnn thank you for the five dollars but um yeah Does I, cnn I'm, have a question no it was literally just five dollars we're the cables news <laughs> we are the most trusted name my favorite the thing <laughs> that i see is the guy with a cnn Nutty, like, nutty. Uh, well, that's a way to ball, man. If you're just going on our YouTube <laughs> channels and making people just say the most trusted name in news, mm -hmm. and now CNN has a drop of you saying that, <laughs> like an audio drop. CNN, the most trusted name in news. Well, I mean, I'm no James Earl Jones, but still, um, Mr. Regular, looking forward to your Road Blaster arcade review. Seriously, oh, is this the guy who has the arcade thing? Seriously though, sorry you weren't at Carlisle today. It was I'm a great we'll day. We'll be there tomorrow. We'll be there tomorrow. Uh, was in the show with my 12 GT500 and was not a wingadinga. So that is an immense accomplishment. Nice. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, tomorrow. Okay, because this is my first time at Ford Nationals. I've been to uh, Chrysler's at Carlisle. Yeah. Uh, or I mean, Corvette's at Carlisle. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and they had a parade. Does this one have a parade? Of <laughs> just... I think they do. I think. I don't know. Yeah. We're not going in it. Yeah. Because the Falcon's not going to cool itself for the Well, parade. we weren't in the last one, were we? No. Like, yeah, it was just kind of a thing. I mean, you did the one um, Kutztown parade. Yeah. But that was a different That was thing. before the new radiator hose, the the one that doesn't allow a bubble to form. That that engine got hot even without the hood on. We, we I did that parade in the Falcon. The Falcon, we took the hood off. Hito Kitty asks... For the possible Model 3 review in North Carolina, will there be a small meetup? There ought to be. There ought to be. I mean, it's how long? It's been almost a year since the last meetup. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, not counting New Zealand. I don't mm -hmm. know why I forgot that. Uh, uh, but, I mean, I really liked the last meet or the meetup last summer in... The, I'm leaning for Labor Day. Labor Day would an, be fine. To do an RCR meetup at the Racquetball Club. Yeah, I love the Racquetball Club. Yeah. And, you know... Um, uh, RCR Chicago, I want to have a meet, but I don't know where. Yeah, if someone could kind of like send us ideas in the e Gmail, I guess, or in these comments here of like yeah. public places or maybe even like car shows we could latch on to yeah. so that we're not doing any organizational work Yeah, uh, that are happening. I don't know. I want to say the weekend of the 15th ish in July. Like it's going to be the week of the 15th. I think we're going to fly out Monday, come back Thursday. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. Um, um screw pup eric thanks for the 20 dollars. screw pup been a fan of you since you started and i wonder about your review i wonder about your uh your views on my 1997 ford aspire oh three-door hatchback work car no one knows what an ass car an aspire is an aspire is a hoard up ford festiva hmm that's what it is like neon pink lipstick and everything oh they they went full 90s with that car <laughs> with like the fuchsia yeah. uh or teal full teal with like yellow highlights the card's great i think you can even get that thing with a three cylinder the horn place torn by natalie and brulia oh shit man it's so good i i love the aspire yeah i remember eh, these girls gave me a ride to yeah, yeah, uh, you ever have to go somewhere, but the car you're getting into is far away and someone else gives you a ride to that car? Does that ever happen? Uh, not really. Uh, it might be a Kutztown thing. You have to park in the fairgrounds. Um, <laughs> so I got a ride in, in their Ford Aspire and it's like an automatic and I'm like, this car has no balls at all. There's nothing to this machine, but I'll bet something that like the Ford Aspire just doesn't quit ever. This makes, makes me miss my Toyota Echo, man. Uh, Twin Leaf. By the way, I've been high. Uh, the hikers gave us beer. 
Oh. And by not a lot of beer, we only have two bottles, but it's a nice change up from this. Yeah. We'll yeah. split each one. Um, Twin Leaf, thank you for $20. Two questions. If you had the choice between a Honda Magna 750 hmm, yeah. or a Shadow 750 from the same issue or 2123, which one would you choose? Hmm. The Magna's going to be faster. The Shadow, no one's going to give a second look at a Shadow 750, but it's going to be a more comfortable bike. Honda Magna. I'm not a big fan of cruisers. The riding position just doesn't work for me. I like standard or sport. So I would probably go with the Magna. I don't like their square headlights that they had. Unless they were. Were they still doing square headlights? No, they were not doing square headlights in 2001. Yeah, Honda Magna. I'll take the complexity for a little bit more fun ride. Uh, the second part of your question says, what is your favorite enlightenment era novel okay this is pre-realism uh, 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 like i would need time <laughs> was the novel invented during the enlightenment period all right let me just look up enlightenment era novels because i have a master's in english and i don't remember any of this Sinners offhand. in the hands of an angry god but those are essays all right let's you go leaves of grass but that's romanticist an yeah. Enlightenment is pre-Romanticist. Yeah. Was the novel invented yet? At that? It's like 18th century in literature. The Was novel there novels of... during the Elizabethan era? Um, Twin Leaf, is it okay if we come back to this question? Yeah. About Romanticist era literature? And there was someone whose uh, super chat question we missed to the oh, effect shit, of um, um, offering to um, be a fixer in Detroit and to go on a tour of a factory, which the weird thing about which, uh, and thank you for that thank you. offer. Thank you so um, much. I cut off the name by accident, but uh, it's one of those things where I have never had the desire to go to Detroit, and it's not because I have like any sort of irrational fear of Detroit being a place where you know, bad things happen, but it's also not that I've ever had the compulsion to want to visit the actual motor city like i don't know what it is it's strange to me of just like having this weird ambivalence where i'm not really i mean i don't dislike the idea but i don't love the idea either you know mm. i guess uh, yeah i have no plans to come to detroit uh thank you for your donation um uh Mike Steinberg talks about Detroit that it's that it's cool, you know. In a long enough timeline, we'll get everywhere we can. Yeah. Matt Gee with I think five Australian dollars says, "Please enjoy these dollary dues." These dollary dues. That was, was that, that good? That was a terrible Australian oh. accent. Um, I can't tell. See. Yeah. Uh, well, hello there. Just says five bucks. Yeah. Uh, Obi Wan. Thank. Uh, this oh, well, hello there. Uh, random reviews. Uh, well, th hello this there. is a this is a non uh, tip question, but it okay. was. Uh, have you guys ever pissed a car owner off? I remember that the Rolls Royce owner not liking something he said. It wasn't that he didn't like it. Something I said. It, I, I said the. I said the Wraith was a seven series because it was. Yeah, and I know the guy whose Julia we did didn't really particular wasn't really happy with the review. Um, but we did a Julia. Yeah, Alfa Romeo Julia in the UK. <laughs> oh yeah, that car. car. <laughs> yeah, took uh, a minute. Sob nine. Is that the Mito? Maybe I am getting it confused with the Mito. Um, yeah, I think I am. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brett Aiken is right. It was a Mito, and so are you. Yeah, it was a Mito. I have no idea why I thought we did a Julia. <laughs> um, hello there. Oh, uh, Ninja Joe's balling. Oh, that's um Joe. Uh, I, his last name is on the tip of my tongue mm. he's friends with peter who came to visit us one time with his fiance demi uh the, he was the saab 900 turbo with oh, the, right. uh, uh, the chalk paint i love that the, car yeah it was a very nice car um my gearbox exploded last year ah, oh man rebuilt it and it's back on the road hey, hey. there we go that, that was a roller coaster ride um let's see what man, thanks for the 10 bucks man yeah thank you 
Um, and let's see who's next on the docket. I got a part-time. Oh, Rob D, five dollars. Thank you, Rob D. Thank you. I got a part-time gig reviewing cars and got my hands on a Trackhawk. But now I feel like working Ooh. on my own car, a Forster XT. Or no, now I feel like working <laughs> on my own car, a Forster XT, is worthless. Thoughts? Well, one of my aspirational cars is a is a Forester XT. I want one of those things. So, uh, um. Well, yeah, Trackhawk is the Hellcat Jeep Grand Cherokee. So you get into anything super fast, it's going to make 250 horsepower. Is it like 220 horsepower? Forester XT feel like nothing. I mean, man, you have a Forester XT. Enjoy it. Go up a few hills. I, you want my stock Forester? 172 <laughs> horsepower? <laughs> Uh, this person, uh, it's just a question for me. Thanks for the Colt, five bucks, man. Colt45 says, any word on the Another Mustang Crash music video? Because um, I had like, announced it before I actually had it ready, and I realized like a lot of the footage that I shot for it I couldn't actually use. Uh, just like weird logistical problems. Um, oh. So I shot a bunch of like other footage for it and roped my friend Brad into it so uh, he could play. I would just have like video of him like shredding so it's not just me. But I want to make like more music videos for the album because the album's been out for officially over a year now and I've done almost nothing to promote it. It's like kind of hilarious. Like I make a Christmas music video for a song that isn't even on the album and it's like I, I don't even know. It's kind of a weird uh, thing. So, I mean, I have ideas for music videos. It's just kind of a weird thing of like, I don't want to overload with non-review content type thing. As I, I love your podcast. response to the Aspire Screw Pup Epic. It's a five-speed, 1.3 liter four-cylinder. Nice. nice. 60 horsepower. New. Basically dangerous to drive in modern traffic. Oh. Those cars were... Those cars were beautiful pieces of shit. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sriracha. <coughs> mm. <sighs> I'm going to go get those beers soon. Nice. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh... <coughs> <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. This was a super chat we missed. Uh, hey guys, I'm up in Scranton. I'm finishing up a 1974 Volkswagen <laughs> 412 and a 1987 Dodge Daytona Shelby. Would you guys like to review them? Uh, send it to the Gmail. Regular cars at gmail.com. Thanks for your donation. And thank uh, you for the donation, the 4.99. Um, Scranton's cool. Mm. It's a nice drive. I, I don't get up there uh, often. There was someone down there. Nuka who... is sending more cash from Carlisle because I'm bored at work and you're the best. Thanks. <laughs> Sriracha sauce. Um, Thanks, the, man. Oh. Uh, someone in a uh, previous chat asked when the next RCR stories is, and I've been working on it forever. It's actually um, sort of adjacent to RCR New Zealand, but I actually picked the topic before we even left, before I was even done with the last one. And the reason it's taking forever is because once I compiled all the information, I realized this is actually a boring story. Uh -oh. So I have to kind of... Uh, but it can be interesting if I arrange all of it in the right way. Like, I want to be a decent enough storyteller that I can take something that isn't interesting on its face and kind of make it interesting. Yeah. So, I don't know. We're going to try for that. So, next thing. Uh, my, my work vehicle. Oh, gosh. This one I left for a while. Wait. How late? Are we? Two questions. We uh, got that yeah. one. Sob 900 that Durable one. says, howdy. Uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. Uh yeah, oh. when, when one runs out, it, it uh, drops off. Uh, that ten. Uh, my work vehicle is on the top 10 Google image result for 1975 Grumman Olsen. Gosh, I wish I knew what that was. What's the best response to people who joke about me being a pedophile? So Ugh. first, let me look up a 1975 Grumman Olsen. Uh, and so Gosh, that we can... I don't know. It's like, why would they... I mean, it's a, a gross looking car. I mean, I think it's like the same way that if you have a mustache, you're either a pedophile or a firefighter. Like, people have that idea about you. Like, it's not true. Plenty of people can have mustaches and not be a member of law enforcement or willing to break the law. But, right. you know, um, I don't Thanks know. Thanks for your response. I'll try to catch you all in Chicago then. Probably better to stay out of Mitten, Mitten anyways. Our roads will destroy cars. 
Uh, yeah, we're going to be in like the Schaumburg area. We're not going to be in Chicago proper because uh, we need the roads to be clear. Oh, Grumman Olsen, an ice cream truck, basically. Oh, well, you just turn that thing into a taco truck and suddenly you're the favorite guy in the neighborhood. Bingo. Yeah. Who doesn't like a taco truck? It's Who? like, does taco truck, is that suddenly elevated above ice cream truck? Yeah, because ice cream truck is like, ah, I'm going to sell weed out of this. And it's like, yeah, this guy's really just a drug dealer. No, no. The thing is, you can sell weed out of your taco truck, and suddenly that's okay. Redding is crawling with like taco trucks, which unsurprisingly, but still, it's like quality tacos, yeah. and that's the important thing. Of like, if you get a taco truck on every avenue, everyone's tacos are going to be different, but everyone's tacos are going to be excellent. Yes. That is like a dumb RCR thing. I, I, every now and again, I look at food trucks, and I'm like. Everybody has done the let's talk about it. Yeah, the, 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 um, the, the I have a taco place, literally a block <laughs> from where I live. That's it's called let's talk about it. And it's themed after Mexican uh, luchadors. Oh, right. Um, Twin Leaf. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind, mind oh, if you sorry. wait on my literature question. Oh, you didn't have to give another 10 bucks, man. I, I mean, I won't stand in your way, but thanks. Thank you. I wouldn't mind to wait on your literature question, but I have to ask another. What are your thoughts on virtual reality? Um, awesome song. Yeah. Jamiroquai? Oh. No. Uh, that's we were... Virtual Insanity. Oh, God! That's right. All right. Uh... First of all, okay, when someone says virtual reality, I, all I think of is Lawnmower Man. <laughs> 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 like, that's my idea of virtual reality. The, uh... Um, uh, look, aren't we there already? We tried it with Second Life. People don't really need the headsets to just get dissolved and ignore their girlfriends and have their relationships fall apart. Yeah, you can get we're that doing just of, yeah, we're doing fine with Fortnite and Overwatch. Yeah, uh, we were we, I, and I am, have not been good with virtual reality anytime I've tried it. Like when we were in New Zealand and we were doing that car game, and uh, you do, you were doing better than I was, but I was crashing. And like, is this is this how you back up? I was like driving yeah. like an old man. It's very bad. Uh, quick 299 question. Look up the EMD 645 and 567 Prime mover, please. All right. All I right. guess you need to look up EMD 645. Uh, the Neuron 2010. Thank you for Canadian $5. Thank you so much. Um, hi from Montreal. Is there such a thing as a good rental car? Yeah. Uh, Toyota Corolla. Like the one we had for the Pacific Fister. I thought that was fantastic. You know, not every place is going to stock Toyotas, but um they're gonna be good man they're they're definitely a solid machine and you can beat on them in the ways you can with like the chrysler 200 it's a v12 turbocharged diesel motor em6 whatever like i've literally never seen this thing before it looks like a train engine it does it it's it's the incredible hulk kind of um um ryan vachin thanks for the 10 bucks ryan said would you ever make a video as wild as the dodge avenger review again not with that language i think we've passed that point where you can get borderline edgelord yeah um, and even now and again some people think the dodge avenger was inappropriate um and rightly so but i think it's funny yeah no <laughs> i it... think it's gross and funny um we could make one that's nonsensical the guys with the van truck wanted a review like that so what i may do is just splice up them explaining stuff about the car and just non sequiturs for myself like how many non sequiturs of me taking a crap can you stand let's find out <laughs> Well, it's also kind of the imagery of like, you know, trying to put a condom on your foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does it mean? What does this mean? So thank you, Ryan Vachon. There you go. Martin 01. And after after Martin 01, I'm going to... Oh, there's a $5. All right. I almost got a break to go get beer. <laughs> Guys, I'm from Argentina. Hello from Argentina. And 60s Falcons were built into the 90s here and are waiting for you. Um, I helped in your first ever live stream over Skype. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I think I remember this. Yeah. Um, you need to f try to find Torino's, Fiat, Dunas, Duna uh, 147s, and only Renaults here. Argentina. Argentina. I mean, we definitely need a fixer if we ever go to South America. Yeah. That's, that doesn't mean anything bad. It's just it's just fact of life. Yeah. it's There's a language barrier. Like, yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, but my Spanish is terrible. Like, that's we're, we're just going to have to accept that I'm like a coconut of sorts. So it's, you know. It happens. Um, if you, oh, 
Let's see. Uh, five dollars. If you think That's VR is not, oh, Burgundy Burnouts. If you think VR is not serious, you need to look up Beat Saber. Also, working on a motor out in the mid Tennessee sun is a good way to lose weight. Oh, I'll bet huh. it is. I can only imagine. I'm just sweating it all out. I can only long, imagine. As long as you keep your sanity intact. Yeah. Can be very easy to lose I one's mind. I wonder who Burgundy Burnouts is that he has the dollars to do this. Well, he's donating time. in small increments. Oh, okay. I mean, he's. Brian, don't feel bad that people are being nice to you. Okay, conscience. Yeah. I'm Jiminy Cricket, here to tell you... Here to tell you that you should be grateful. <laughs> it's implying so, that I'm not. Uh, um, there's someone that just gave $5 with nothing attached to it. Yes. Thank you. What, what, uh, where is it? Chaz. Oh, NZ. NZ. Chaz from NZ. Thanks for... Kiwi dollars, best dollars. Uh, they see. got animals on them. They're and cool, now, cool uh, looking and stuff. John Kleemeyer. Kleemeyer. Thank you. Thanks for the five bucks, John. Thank you. Did you borrow the grunty voice from Red Letter Media? No, I kind of borrowed uh, Mr. Plinkett. <laughs> right down here in my basement. Like, I mean, it's 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 clearly a, a homage, and I love the guy dearly, and everybody has influences, and he's one of mine. Yeah. Uh, God, I really want that beer in the other room, but I want to answer your questions too. Hello from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hello from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Florida Rail Flanning 812. Just look up a video of the EMD 645 and 567. It's heaven on earth. You should try a locomotive review someday. You know, every now and again we try, and every now and again people offer us trains, and <laughs> it's it's a question of how much can I be running around? How, can, how do we get shots of the train moving yeah um if you're not superman <laughs> and there are rules about trains you know airplanes you just kind of get up there and i got my long lens that kind of works from the ground yeah. trains are like you know it's not like they can stop if something bad's happened they yeah. keep going or like slow down so we can catch up right like and that and odds are like there's not going to be a parallel road that you can drive your right. car alongside to get the train all right we got it set up and now we're like all you right know, when i had oh, i'm sorry no 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 that's when i had my toyota echo one time i put it in neutral and rolled it over my own foot like i grabbed the car I pulled it over a, my bare foot, and I'm like, huh, this really doesn't hurt. I have a car, a drive wheel on my foot, and it really doesn't hurt. Huh. And I thought about a train just now, and your foot's gone. Yeah, no, no more foot. Uh, Jack Isbell. Thanks for 10 bucks, Jack. Uh, when is the next time you think you will be in the Bethlehem Easton area? Or what is the next event you plan to be at? Have you ever been to the CAC to steal? Oh, Cars and Coffee at Steel Sacks. I've been there. And cock makes baby younger bunga. <laughs> um, I love Steel Stacks Cars and Coffee, but you if you want to go there and get a spot, you got to get up at 5 in the morning to drive out there. There's people already posting up at like 5.30 to get into that place. That's the Cars and Coffee for East PA, New Jersey, and even bits of New York City. Because it's huge, and everybody wants to get their picture taken in front of the steel mill. And it's it's fantastic i'd love to do it it's like it's one of those deals where oh, i've got to take the sleeping pill at 7 p.m and yeah. go to bed at 8 p.m so yeah. you can get a full eight hours Here, of sleep before you get the beer check out the 50 dollar one uh we can wait is, on the which $50. is the next one that'll stay up no just trust me trust me okay <laughs> stop stop and go, and go kill, get, get beer. beer. <laughs> but I have to answer the ones that are gonna go away really fast. Here, I'll, I'll Kirsten Rowley them. says, "Please come to Boise, Idaho, anytime ever." We have uh, no Idaho plans, man. I hear it's fantastic, and I hear everybody in Idaho says, "Don't come to Idaho." Because they don't want people to know how beautiful it is. Yeah, it's I, like the same thing going on with Utah. Yeah, that my, that's like America's like bonus track almost in a way, if you think about it. Okay. Um, uh, so this one, James Royball, Ryball. Um, the RCR podcast is my favorite. Listen at work. Great treat to catch it live. Love what you guys do. Keep it up. Thanks, and get your beer. Thank you. We are on it. 
Uh, let's see. Others, 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 others. Um, Brendan Fitzpatrick, what's up from Westchester, PA? I know you've been out to our cars and coffee before and did a culture video. I wanted to see if you guys would be up to do one about drifting and club loose. Um, I mean, it's hard to really say no, but it's like finding time to do those things because um, even though it might not seem like it, we do kind of keep a full schedule within you need a glass uh, within degrees of relevance. Um, you know, either filming stuff or you know just doing podcasts or just writing too, because that's kind of a time-consuming thing to do too. Even just writing a song like this week's. This coming week's episode, the song took me like two hours to do because there's like harmonies and all that stuff, which I didn't have to do, but like I wanted to do it because sometimes like I work harder on the songs in the reviews where I feel like my my contributions aren't terribly funny so that I can have something else that like someone will point out. Um People, uh, Sean Brewer, thank you for the five dollars. He says, People give me crap because my drink of choice is a horse's tail with honey bourbon. What is a Thoughts? horse's tail? All right, let's go to Google. While he's going to Google, the beer, the first beer from the evening of the two that we have, you know, we have <laughs> liquor and we have beer, is Crimson Pistol IPA, ale brewed with his hibiscus flowers. I remember this from last year, it's almost a shandy. I like IPAs. Uh, actually, my uh, guy I work out with from time to time, his name's Paul. He owns a Viper truck, which I'd like to review at some All point. Right. He, like, gives me a beer out of his gym bag. All right, so... He's like, yeah. I had a rough day at work. I'm going to drink in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. What the hell are the logistics in reviewing a UPS, a USPS mail truck or a FedEx truck? Okay, FedEx trucks aren't really FedEx trucks. They uh, subcontract out, so... Any truck can be a FedEx truck. They just paint them. Yeah. Um, what you can't get your hands on is a UPS, a UPS truck. They have their own. They have their own vehicles. Yeah. I'd love to see a review of one. That's probably impossible. Yeah, I don't know how do you get your hands yeah. on a Grumman LLV, which is a, a, a U.S. postal uh, truck, Grumman Long Life vehicle. Um, as far as the horse's tail go, I could only find the horse's neck, which is two ounces of bourbon brandy or American rye whiskey, ginger ale, uh, one lemon peel, and served in a Collins glass. Hmm. So. Burgundy burnouts. Thanks again for five bucks. Thank you man. again. You need a person copying and pasting super chats into a Google Doc for you. Uh, Nick is kind of screenshotting them with his phone as they come in. Yeah, I'm but trying. again, it's tough. It is um, into a Google Doc for you. Also, I work for an IT company that's headquartered in Nashville. Well, that's where the Falcon came from. Yep. We have to return to Nashville at some point to return the Fal Falcon to Joseph Rini, the previous owner, so he can drive that car with a. Uh, with a five liter V8 in it. Uh, what's up from Westchester, PA? I think you answered this Oh, one. yeah, I answered that one. Um, yeah. yeah, I thought your cars and coffee got shut down. Um, guys, be up to do one for a drifting and club loose. Uh, drifting seems silly to me. And I, if I ever go to uh, a drifting event, I'm going to film the people at the drifting event. <laughs> it's like me going back to. The next time I go back to uh, the New York Auto Show, it's going to be everything but the cars. Like, there's going to be not a single goddamn car in that. And it's just going to be the people there and, like, reviewing the people of the uh, New York Auto Show at press day. Yeah. Mike G., thank you for uh, 10 Canadian dollars, says you don't got to answer them all. Yeah, I Which, do. I mean, it's funny. The average YouTube streamer will just, like, give a nod. Oh, thanks for the money, blah, blah, blah. Really? And if there's that's a question they, and they, they, they might answer the question, but uh, not everybody answers every question. Huh? And so we're kind of like weird well not we're, we're not weird it's just okay we've been doing this for years and we're still not used to the idea of like people giving money for this especially like through here it's kind of when it's like on demand like tipping it feels strange and you feel you know beholden to answer some questions yeah and if that's all that they're asking for whatever they're donating like mm -hmm. it seems like the least the only thing is like then you end up missing some of the other questions and then that's so why i try to like screenshot some right. non uh, that five dollars about to go away uh jack is bill five dollars mr regular's best impression of a 2011 land rover lr4 as well as a 2006 nissan frontier also say james wolman is the swollest man 
<laughs> uh, I wonder if my is my voice too high on this one because I get close to the mic. Should I pot myself down? James Wolin is the swollest man. James Wolin is the swollest man. <laughs> James Wolin is the swollest man. <laughs> James Wolin is the smallest man. Oh, I'm shitting on my shit. <laughs> uh, uh, Canadian ten dollars. Uh, don't gotta answer them all. Okay, I answered that one. <laughs> <laughs> Love your channel. I've been watching ridiculous season the Dodge Aspen review. Thank you, Sean Gray. Thank you for the ten bucks. Is this one about to go away? Teams bought. Thanks for the ten bucks. Mean are van trucks the dankest rcr mem or the dankest rcr meme mem meme or the dankest rcr meme that seems kind of like a rhetorical question um also there was someone in the super chat who we missed whose name was riff raff and riff raff if you're still here send your question but don't like attach money to it just yeah, like yeah. just give us the question or if someone in the chat remembers what riff raff's question was uh give us a heads up did he just say it again uh sitting here at work watching four 10 speed transes go on the line thank you guys for the awesome content thank you riff raff um is that is that his was that it one? Was was that the original one? Because Sitting I feel at like work watching the Ford ten speed trans go by on the line. Are you like at a manufacturing plant? Hmm. That'd be all. That'd be cool <clears throat> if you are. Yes. Chevy Equinox. Um, um. Okay. Love your channel. Been watching since that. Our yeah, van trucks, trucks the dankest man. Well, van truck is a real thing. They're called Ford Centurions, uh, and they were like a, a coach built Ford. Sorry, there's a three dollar one I have to catch up on. Uh, right. Desert clam, thanks for three bucks, man. Three dollars. Uh, dick dabbing rag fun. <laughs> <laughs> also, any thoughts on solo? We were just talking about solo. Yeah, right here. Um, I'll keep it brief, but basically, uh, it doesn't take more than ten minutes to get over the fact that it's not Harrison Ford. I think it's the best Star Wars movie of the 21st century, which includes like the prequels, sequels, Rogue One, uh, the animated clone wars uh theatrical release uh, so it's a very it's it feels like almost like the original trilogy again it's that kind of like swashbuckling adventurous type of feeling and uh the cast is great uh i feel like they're getting star wars right and um but again i don't want to be one of those gatekeeping star wars fans who's like oh my 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 expanded universe and blah, 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 blah. it's you know you get over certain things in the film pretty fast but you get origins for a lot of different things and there weren't like groaning moments there were kind of like nice tip of the hats to like other moments of the original trilogy but not in a way that induces groans except for one moment there's one moment moment in the first act of the film that i'm pretty sure fanboys are going to be absolutely furious over and i just want to tell them like i and if you've seen the movie i know you know what it is and i'm just telling you now like get over it like get over it it's not a big deal uh so yeah uh so thank you again for the three dollars i did not see it i'm waiting for my buddy tom mansell to come home and we're gonna do an rcr like a beer centric one mm. and um then either before or after that we're going to go see solo i think we're going to have to go to the uh, theater in hamburg i think they're playing it mm. um or else we'll just have to find some place it's absolutely worth the money matt king two dollars thanks man do you guys plan on coming to arizona it may be the fuck this winter <laughs> yeah uh, like either vegas or because uh, i'm at my wits end with pennsylvania marches Oh, yeah. Because everything comes a month late. Like, you're expecting it in February, and it comes in March. Um, Haytree hey, says, you always love the crappiest cars. I'm betting you'd love the Lee car. I'll bet I do. The Pontiac Lee car. Gosh, I don't know if anybody... I'd have to, I'd have to check the email to see if someone uh, offered one up. He's fingering the beer bottle. I'm, I, it's the knobs on the bottom. Oh, that's They're right. electric. You poured me beer. I forgot. Hmm. Uh, now, uh, let's see. Ian Couric, uh, uh, I, could you scroll up quick? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, because I 
now I'm handsless. Um, listen to how Matt Farah handles his super chats. Answer some, but don't feel obligated to them. It detracts from natural conversation. I don't disagree, but we're like weird and not nearly as used to the whole thing as I don't know. I, I feel like if we lived in LA or something, we would get used to it pretty Does fast. Matt but Farah not answer every single super chat. I, I guess he acknowledges them, but, um, you know, well, it's also the reason that I think we're doing it this style is because neither of us really have stories to tell this week. You know, yeah. I mean, the, I went to Richmond and I did a lot of swing. Okay. So here, quick story. Yeah. The weird thing about these stories is we have to, I'm seeing this timer run down on these super chats. It creates a weird anxiety. It, it, it does. Yeah. To, you have to get to them before the story's over, but then they go away and, and you forget here, about them. I'll snap this. Charlie Boy Games ninety eight. Hi from Hazelton. Oh hey, you're up. You're up eighty one. Hey Potsy, crack <laughs> me up when we get to eighty one. Hi from Hazelton, PA. I'm about an hour away from you guys and my duties. I oh, you'd have to haul ass to get here into Hazelton in an hour. Like you keep going north and and then you realize you're only at McAdoo. <laughs> it's like ridiculously specific Pennsylvania things. See, the one thing I love to going up to the Hazleton area is going to like Sugarloaf and like Conningham, uh, where the Stewart's root beer is. Because I have like super like nostalgic stuff about the Stewart's drive-in and that mini golf course back in the day. Hmm. I'm all about from you guys, Mario dudes. Keep up the great videos. Yeah. All right. I snapped the next two ones. So uh, real quick, I'm just gonna do the. I go. I went to Richmond, Virginia, right? And so I was driving down there, and I stopped at the uh, West Virginia Welcome Center to use the restroom. I go in there, and in the handicap stall, right next to a perfectly clean, one of the most pristine toilets I've ever seen, is just a giant, like, dick-shaped duke that someone had taken on the floor like on the floor you just completely that's far beyond just missing the toilet it's you've made a concerted effort not to go in the toilet but also it's all like in one unbroken piece it's the most bizarre thing that i've seen it's almost like someone let their horse in there to just take a well actually no because horses are kind of like clumps but anyway i go there to go swing dancing and i see who is pretty much this, I meet this woman there who is basically a vision, like a, the most like beguiling human being, but she's kind of like, I don't know, everyone who knows her says she's kind of like, eh, like mm. crazy. Well, not crazy, but um, she kind of looks like this weird cross between like a young Emily Mortimer and current Lily Collins, which I love Lily Collins. Like I'm a little bit in love with Lily Collins. So people who know who those people are like great. Um, and if not, whatever, but yeah, I went swing dancing and I got to swing dance with this girl and she's very good and she's, you know, super talented and gorgeous. And I didn't say anything because the last thing I need to do is like anything where I'm just like going to compromise my better judgment, which I mean, my better judgment is a myth anyway. So yeah. Back to Super Chat, which if it's not been... Oh, what was the one with the gas money? Because I uh, clicked the away gas and it went away. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, here's gas money. Um, yeah, here's gas money. Something. Let's see. Uh, you've reviewed all my cars. Any other good automatics other than the DSG? Yeah, and his cars... uh, a GM4 L80E. It's a great automatic transmission. Yeah, his cars were the GTI Mark V or MK5, uh, Outback and MK3 Wolfsburg. So, oh, Chad, New Zealand, would you do a Honda Prelude review? I filmed a Honda Prelude. We are doing one. Uh, it's coming up eventually. And what do you think of Preludes? Preludes was the first car I bought virtually in Gran Turismo 1. I have a soft spot for them. They are expensive Civics. <laughs> uh, um, in today's in today's high hoose and LS world, they don't make the power that I remember my imagination giving them. But that one I drove was still a whole lot of fun, and uh, it's there's notes up on the bulletin board out of frame about that particular uh, prelude uh, that we did. Or well, Nick wasn't present for that one, but yeah. I have plenty to say about it. 
I have positive thoughts on Preludes. I don't think I'd ever own one because some of them are wholly complicated. And they did come with four-wheel steering, which is a whole nother thing. That's, uh, the 80s were like, when the 80s wanted to do things, it's like complicated was good. And that's not the case today. Again, Ellis Motors. Randy Bish, thanks for five bucks, man. It'd be a shame if my friends in the next room lost the... Uh... No, we lost it. The game. Please assist. And I guess we just did. Cheers, um, Randy. Cheers, Randy. Oh, well, I hit my mic. Um, Jack Isbell, $5. Thank you for the five. Uh, add me on Xbox. Uh, and it's his name, Pony Slayer 82 I don't actually have an Xbox, and I don't think you do either. I have no consoles at all. But because when you mentioned playing Deus Ex, it was on your PC. Yeah, right over there. Yeah. And but wait, what do you what did you play uh, Borderlands on? PC. Oh, that was on. Oh, okay, cool. I have a uh, PS4, but I don't remember what. Uh, my name Burgundy is. Burnouts says, but it's not a V8, please. I need a I need a clip before a video. What? I think. Is oh, it? say, but it's not a V8. But oh, it's not it, a. Well, what's not a V8? A Prelude. Plus, I need a clip for a video. No, he needs. Oh, oh, oh he, yeah. he wants a take. Okay. But it's not a V8. How was that? Jimmy Sanchez, $5. You should visit Northern California if you like hiking. No, not the Bay Area. Redwood NP, Trinity River, Mount Shasta, Mount Lassen. It's our bonus track. Thank you for the $5. Um, uh, love to come back to Northern California. Have no plans. Uh, the guy with the war wagon up there, which is a Rambler with an LS swap and a Tremec 6 speed. I think I'm friends with him on Twitter. In fact, I know I am. Uh, he's up there. I want to go out there for that. There's lots of places I want to go. There's so much time and, you know, our budget, which you're helping with, by the way. Thank you so to much. To get us out yeah. there. Um, um, oh, uh, who did we did uh, Workforce 520 just gave us four ninety nine. Yeah. Thank you, Workforce 420. You should visit Northern California. We did that one. Oh, those are uh, the 50. To, uh, what do we to have? the left. Oh, new RCR merch at some point. You um, know, I was thinking of actually, oh, this is like... The brand the shirt. Brand, making a brand I, I actually top. like the brand tank top, but the problem is to really sell the brand tank top, like you gotta bring back Stan the Man, like at some point of like more than once. Like I okay. When we wrote that guy at the Trogues Brewery, like there was no idea I thought it'd be like a throwaway thing. I didn't think anyone would actually like Stan the Man. Like the point is you're not supposed to like him. Like he's supposed to be super obnoxious YouTuber guy. And people kept asking, like on the subreddit and other subreddits of like what specific YouTuber would no specific YouTuber. There is none. It's, an it's just a, Yeah, it's just whatever YouTuber. Uh just YouTube guy. Yeah. Um And even uh uh Neil Roberts, uh, the real Neil. Uh, said, dude, that was. He said that was brilliant. Ah. He said, "I've you've you've captured everything I hate about YouTube." <laughs> and it's like, all right, again, you're supposed to despise this guy. It's yeah. like the Joker not really being kind of like a throwaway. And they tried to, you know, because in the early, um, you know, after the Jack Nicholson thing, they thought, well, okay, we won't really do the Joker. And then they go with the Penguin, who's like a yeah. dime store Joker. Yeah. Well, it's also it's a better analog, I think, would be Kylo Ren in the new Star Wars movies in that people complain that he's not cool. And it's like you're not supposed to think he's cool. Yeah. He's supposed to be kind of lame. He's supposed to be uh, a sort of dime store Vader of because he's trying to emulate his grandfather. Yeah. And he has never really figured things out the way that like Anakin always had conflict with the dark in him. Kylo Ren has always had conflict with the light in him and I'm going full nerd on this. And so mm -hmm. it's one of those things of just, uh, you know, there's no real, I don't know. I would love to take a crack at like a star Wars script of just like, I want to sit down and write a screenplay yeah. and like really get a shot at it. But like, I, I don't have the patience for film school. Uh, speaking of which I saw this video and I got to show it to you at some point from right. a YouTuber called Austin McConnell, who did this half hour diary of the making of his very first feature length film. And he, uh, talked about kind of like how hard it is, but it reminded me of something like it's better than any journal like I've ever done. It's one of the, it's just a very in-depth look at um, what it is to sort of be a filmmaker and what it's like to fail as a filmmaker. Like, 
I thought of it because of the last Jedi line of like the greatest teacher failure is, and we are what they grow beyond like that type of thing. Um, but yeah, it's great. Anyway, sorry, got sidetracked uh, in weird story town, but um, swollen s woolen 97. Uh, thank you for 999. Uh, I'll sign up for the WWE network with that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, is there a good way to ship a car across the country, Missouri no. to Maryland, without costing an arm and a leg? No. Thanks. Love your videos. You're the only channel where I watch every one of your videos. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Man, when it comes to shipping cars, what's the joke that all contractors are crooks and all car shippers are shady? Dude, I don't know. Without costing an arm and a leg, that's like asking, "Where can I get my car? Ca where can I get my car painted for a thousand dollars?" You can't. I just want a good paint job on my car. I know this is kind of me talking about Paul, but, um, and I respect you know people want their cars painted, but th there's like this old Onion article that's just called. The good shit is three hundred dollars. <laughs> area man says he can't find the good shit anymore for reasonable price. All records said the good shit is now three hundred dollars, and I, the article ends with uh, now sources are reporting in that you can really only find the real good shit for four fifty, <laughs> like four hundred fifty. Uh, this Look, man, th there's a reason the good car shippers cost an arm and a leg. It's because you know your car is not going to get dinged. Um, man, it's, car shipping's tough, man. You just got to lay back and take it like Fannie Mae. Uh, <laughs> Workforce 520. That's a great line. <laughs> 499, you got to lean back and take it like Fannie Mae. I'm going to get a bad dragon dildo and just burn the words Fannie Mae on it. <laughs> <laughs> Workforce 520, 499. Thanks, man. Thank you. I've been a fan since the Mercury Sable over you. Man, that was with a uh, one. I did that with a DJ from uh, KUR, from my KUR days at Kutztown University. We also need more Harold Slavinsky. Uh, He's not coming back, man. Yeah, he yeah. can never come back. After he tried to come back, you can't bring him back. Yeah. Brandon Fitzpatrick, before he goes away. Westchester Cars and Coffee just moved spots because the coffee shop closed and because we got shut down. <laughs> yeah, because it's always D-bags. Hey, that's the thing. Uh, oh, uh, Grand e opening? Grand closing. closing. <laughs> yeah. uh, this uh, guy, Ian Keurig, uh, thank you for the $2 Canadian. Uh, it's just Burgundy Burnout sent a non... A non well, non review. It, Damn it, that dude in blue just started streaming at the same time. Well, David Patterson is this. I should freaking call David Patterson right now. I was like, I'm streaming right now. You can't stream right now. I'm good. That, that'd be funny if I freaking call David Patterson right now. Does he know we're streaming right now? Well, I, I mean, I can't imagine he does. Right yeah. Now. Like, when do we ever stream? Th that'd at be this freaking hour? funny. You should. You should totally do dude, it. Dude, I should get. You should uh, drink more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we'll do that. We'll do that in a little bit. I'm totally gonna call David Patterson and just like scream nonsense into his phone. Ian Curick uh, donated two dollars Canadian to Roman Screenplay Fund. What's funny is I always had a dream like this story that has been sitting in my head forever since I was like a teenager that uh, I know I'm never gonna write it, um, but it's kind of like uh, it's a trilogy about a town of. Or, about a community of people with superpowers, but like there's five different like cities in this community or five different towns. But basically it's a trilogy where you have five different choices for what the first book is. And each book is about like a different set of characters who all come together in the second and third books of the trilogy. So that no matter which book you pick as the first book in the trilogy, uh, you know, uh you'll be able to follow in the second and third it's just it you'll get more if you read like all five of them first or you could even go back and read them. it doesn't really matter but it's been sitting there for, in my head forever and it's like people wouldn't expect me to write some like young adult nonsense but i'd probably like you know beef it up with some swear words or something but i don't know um yeah uh let's see other questions and other things in the live chat humans and such uh let's see um brown this is the content i subscribe for call him call him call him <laughs> like everybody oh. just say uh when is roman tell him i'm fine on my phone oh there uh, he's looking for his phone 
uh manny paul walker when is roman gonna sing us a song uh you you got what i need but you say he just a friend you say he just a friend oh baby you and that's all i got um but <laughs> it's uh let's see is uh if anybody is simultaneously also on the Dude in Blues chat channel, <laughs> just just tell them I'm about to call them. Um, let's see. Uh, Stephen Fong, thank you for 420. Um, I need to drop my O2 LeSaber for a Volvo XC70. Why? Uh, you got a perfectly reliable car. I mean, yeah. You've got perfect dad style. Yeah, totally. Now you have rich dad style in the Volvo xc70 um like what's his question why does he no it's just that was oh this one anon moose did someone say arizona oh nick to sweeten the deal i have a large stash of green chartreuse did i mention liking green chartreuse that's something that i was just introduced to in rochester in january i had it for the first time yeah it's a drink it's kind of, it tastes like pine needles basically um without the stabbing it's delightful i like it but hunter us time I think Hunter S. Thompson used to drink that. I'm pretty sure like, he did. There's that one YouTube video of um, Joe Rogan reads Hunter S. Thompson's morning routine. And a bit of it was like, at, at some hour, it was chartreuse. So maybe that was it. Hey, Roman, Tombstone, good movie or great movie? Um, I love Westerns. Um, the funny thing is, is when people say Tombstone, I always immediately think of the movie Maverick with uh, Mel Gibson and Jodie Foster because I keep forgetting that Tombstone is a completely different movie. And then when people mention Maverick, I think of The Quick and the Dead and then blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Tombstone is a good Western and it's definitely underrated. And I would, um, I mean, it's not Unforgiven, but what movies are. Uh, right. Or um, Hangman's Noose, which I love Hangman's Noose with uh, Randolph Scott. Uh, it's a very old Western from like the 1950s or 60s. Oh. I love Randolph Scott Westerns because he's this everyman who doesn't look like he belongs in a Western, oh. but he's so normal looking and so average looking that to cast him as the hero in a Western almost makes it, you know, I don't know. Help, I've fallen. <laughs> Hillary. Hillary. <laughs> Help, I've fallen in popularity and can't wake up. Something, something, emails. Well, you're on pills anyway. Yeah. Both falling in popularity and can't make up. Let's see. Uh, what I other... I wonder if she try. Like, I can and can't see her trying again. No, no. Oh, God, no. They would never let her try again. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, it's... it. If she... If it were... Man, yeah, I... I no. <laughs> Do I have David Patterson's number saved um, in my email? Oh, this is a good one. Okay, so Skeet RX8. Um, good replacement host for Matt LeBlanc on Top Gear because uh, today Matt LeBlanc announced that he's leaving Top Gear due to the strains of the role because he also has a CBS sitcom that just got renewed called Man With A Plan. Okay. And so he was having a, you know, I, I don't know if he's flying back and forth because I haven't watched the new Top Gear to see if they're still doing it in the UK. Um, huh. Are they still doing it in the UK? Somebody in the chat answer me because I literally don't watch their Top Gear. Um, I kind of stopped after Netflix took down all the old, like the classic Top Gears. I was like going through season after season. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's funny is I have Amazon Prime and I still haven't seen season two of the Grand Tour. Me like, neither. It, you know, yeah. and it's, I don't know. Anthony um, Coos, I will answer that question with my pick for the, the replacement. Anthony Canos Can says... Canose? Do a series on thoughts of on, through the fuel crisis. On cars through the fuel crisis. Well, huh. we'll just do a whole bunch of Malays era stuff, of which we have a Malays era car lined up for RCR Chicago. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. My pick to... Here's my sort of 1.15 pick of who to replace Matt LeBlanc for Top Gear. Chris Harris should be the lead presenter because he's the best. Mm -hmm. And to replace Matt LeBlanc, Tom Clark. Clearly. All right. He knows his stuff encyclopedia. Like, like Tom Clark knows as much about cars as Matt Farah does. And you'd never think it. You know, Tom Clark, the lead singer of The Enemy. Yes. We hung out with him for weeks. The guy knows everything. He's, he's a total nut. And he'd be perfect for the show. He wouldn't have the high energy of it, but... 
you don't need that. You, you always need the straight man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up Tom Clark because I just wanted to send a congratulations to him because he said on Twitter that he's playing tonight is his last show as a single man. Like he he's marrying Kate. Oh, soon. yeah. We, we yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I Would, thought the matter. Jeez. Well, I mean, I know he proposed. I always thought it was I, I always referred to Kate as the wife. Yeah. Well, I mean, in my head, it's kind of like they they fit together so well. Yeah. That they're, uh, they're that kind of a couple that you kind of aspire to uh, be yourself. If I were a couple person, yeah. which I I don't know. It depends on the person, I guess. Uh, but congratulations, Tom and Kate, for whenever it is that you're walking down the aisle and yeah. many happy returns. Yeah. But yeah, Tom Clark is a very good choice and not one that I would have immediately came to mind. But yeah. he's forgotten more about like British automotives than I'll ever know. Yeah. Uh, that <laughs> it, it, Yes, someone out there, please just tap Tom Clark. Yeah. Like, hey, Tom, this is a gig you can do. And you don't have to play. <laughs> like, Not that he doesn't want to do music, but it was the weird thing hanging out with Tom Clark. All we wanted to do was talk about music. And all yeah. he wanted to do was talk about cars. Yeah. He's like, I want to talk about something that's not my gig. And he was the same way. Yeah. I wanted to talk about like the the records on his wall or yeah. like the award that was just a middle finger. And I'm just <laughs> like, oh, man, I want to win an award that's just a middle finger. <laughs> like, that's incredible. Um, but yeah, that was uh, great. And I miss England sometimes. Call like, Patrick I, George again. Uh, be careful doing RCR Chicago bang bang yeah we're not like going in Chicago Chicago not that we aren't going to go downtown unless you're talking about like St. Valentine's Day Massacre Chicago <laughs> the guy on the right looks like a net beard who got a what oh that's Ice. me oh yeah no um uh basically like i was super hot like hot as in like physically hot and not attractive uh so i took off my shirt and i had a beater underneath so i'm just chilling in this and that's why you're getting exposed to the uh whatever like the freaking like 20 calibers here i don't know two words snow and sleep from stephen fang thanks for thanks for five bucks two words snow and sleep i run a 12 i run 12 hour shifts and sometimes i can't drive after work what do you think about the LeSabre and Volvo XC70? Oh, so your idea is you want to sleep in the car? Well, no, then, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, you're you're not going to deal with like a Buick LeSabre. No, you're going to have the Volvo XC70. I mean, I get that the back seat of a of a, of a uh, LeSabre is nice, but yeah, I mean, when snow comes into the picture and you're living in a state that just doesn't handle their, their snow removal. You have to do it. Uh, 299 question. Uh, I own a 2007 Saturn Ion 2.2 Auto. Official car of what? Oh, the Ion. Huh. Okay. A Saturn Ion, but it's not the red line. So you don't have the hot one. Yeah. Saturn Ion. Uh... Hmm. Okay, you're an uncle. Derek, you work part time. You can watch the kids. <laughs> Saturn Ion. Oh my God, that's me. Like, <laughs> uh, because, Nick, you work from home. You can watch the kids. Yeah, it's Saturn like Ion, <laughs> also a two door coupe, like an SN95. Uh, uh, Stephen Fang, $5. Oh, wait, no, it was the same one. Oh, that's the same Yeah. One. Uh,. I still have yet to call David Patterson. I wonder if he he knows or if people are on his channel like saying like official car of soon to be divorced parents. Like Saturn Ion was was so nice and now I just think of it as like horrible horrible people of Walmart driving these things. Cuz nice ones are still nice but they don't age well. The Ion isn't aging well at all. Hmm. You guys seriously are the best. You're clever and funny. Total my favorite show period. What do you think of the low displacement new vehicles? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with high, I'm fine with low displacement high boost. It's where we're going right now to meet, meet the new emission standards. Whether if whether or not the president of the United States is going to roll back these these things, I don't know. Yeah. So POTUS. Here, I'm tuning into David's stream oh good idea because it's ask me anything my dudes my dude um, <laughs> uh first review i saw was from the 94 eagle talon you really captured what it meant to be a dsm owner yeah the first one was like uh oh oh that's green isn't it <laughs> any thoughts 
on them and the 4G. Oh gosh, I don't know this engine, man. I'm sorry. 4G 63T. So is that a four liter or something engine? I think we have a DSM lined up for RCR Chicago. So it's going to be good stuff. We got GM Malaise in, in Chicago. We got a DSM in Chicago. We have a motorcycle. And I think we have one sort of well, one very regular, but a very regular, but enthusiast car. So people are complaining like lately it's been like Halo cars with the Corvette, with the uh, Demon and stuff. And Monday's review is kind of a bit of aspirational. But don't worry, like we're bringing it back with uh, the stuff we did at Harris Hill and also RCR Chicago. Oh, 4G, uh, Quentin Kivo says 4G 63 is the engine in the Talon. Well, thank you. So do you think if emission standards were reformed, do you think companies would create larger displacements? Yeah, probably. But yeah, I, I, I think I think they would. Now you can get around that by having truck engines and stuff. It's really having larger displacements in smaller cars, which is great. But I think a lot of the 2 liter, 2.2 liter, 2.4 liter, 2.5 liter engines are going to disappear from small cars and it's going to be kind of crappy because we're not going to have the torque. But at the same time, you put a turbo on those things, we're going to get the high horsepower. So I don't think it's going to be that bad. Thank you for the people correcting me that the 4G63 is the 2.4 liter turbo. Are all the cars from RCR Chicago chosen? I want my Honda Accord reviewed. Um, there I, I'm, oh wait, I'm, <laughs> you I'm, want I'm, David I'm, Patterson's stream? Yeah, no, yeah, I commented. Oh wait, hang on a second. I have to sign in. Oh, you got to sign in. Yeah, because I realize I'm not actually uh, all right signed in as. Yeah, me. I'm gonna get my. I can log in on this YouTube thing and then get on David Patterson's and just bug him. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, whoops. Oh, that's right. I changed my password. Oh. Do, 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 do. Have you ever you been... Might, you might want to turn that down. I think the mic's picking oh. it up. Oh, that's me again. <laughs> I'm on his stream. <laughs> wait, I should really have like... um. Wait, we have to hear it. I have to have headphones in for me to hear David Patterson's stream. Ask me anything, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Internet. I, I know is this is going to be happening yet. <laughs> I know this is going. Oh, be... he. Oh, David Patterson doesn't have slow mode on. Oh, so it's like so just it's going sailing boom, by. boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I, I could type something. Like, 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 look how fast this is moving. I, I, I see your thing. No, seriously, this is David Patterson's stream. Look at. Oh, it went away. Uh, the accelerometer is moved. Come on. Yeah. Look how fast his stream goes. Of course, now when I show it to you, it's not moving at all. <laughs> is this copyright? I don't know. Miss Jones taught me English, but I think I just shot her son. You ever hear that song, Slow Motion by uh, Third Eye Blind? No. It's one of the greatest songs ever. And I remember the first time I heard it, a friend sent it to me and I played it as a part of my like falling asleep track list. And like I woke up so vaguely upset by it. Um, I don't know. It just kind of made me think of my brother, which nothing happened to my brother. It's just I always used to worry about him. So uh, um, I want to see if David notices my comment. Mm -hmm. Rubber Duck. Thank you for Canadian $20. Just want to contribute a little because I enjoy you guys so much. I listen to you guys a lot driving my truck. Oh, thanks, man. You drive truck? Like Bobtail or something like that? Love the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Rubber Duck. Wait a minute. Wait, Rubber Duck, Rabbit Ears, Hammer Down. I wonder if that's a vague They Might Be Giants reference. Brandon Fitzpatrick. Thanks for the five bucks, Brandon. Oh, we're always talking to you. Love RCR documentaries. Would you do one about the Ferrari F50 stolen from the PA dealership? That's a crazy story. Has that story Never? just been told? I've that's new to me. There was a is that a recent thing that's going on? 
there was an RCR story that I was going to do, um, and I had it all set up, and I was almost going to, like, actually reach out to the dude's daughter to see if, like, hey, can we coordinate on this? And um, I, but then I'm like, let me first look through YouTube and make sure someone hasn't done anything about it. Jalopnik had, like, this feature-length documentary on it, so really? I'm just like, forget it. And so I decided, like, not to do it. Um, it's a fascinating story, and uh, it's about, I'll just say, it's Randy Lanier, uh, the race who ended up going to jail for uh uh like trafficking and but he got into racing late and basically he got into racing late with almost like no prior training for racing and smoked a lot of people uh he was like this weird prodigy but he's also a very interesting guy it's a fascinating story and just like type in randy lanier and the jalopnik video will come up it's not feature length i think i might have gone a bridge too far on that but it's like a half hour and it's definitely worth watching so just you know no matter how you feel about you know gawker media or kinja as a commenting platform <laughs> you know just i that. just commented on david's scream like i'm gonna call you <laughs> like he's either on this or he's not yeah yeah I, I commented on his thing some people like said hi to me i gotta get in like full like wwf mode yeah. <laughs> let me tell you something <laughs> let me tell you wait you should be my promoter and i should take my shirt off oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, all right let me tell you something if the road the american dream uh i've dined on pork and beans and uh he had dinner with kings and queens and we're gonna talk about this daddy uh all right first... i gotta i gotta take off this mic and put the sn95 on it here I, let, <laughs> let me think of like a hypothetical uh <laughs> wrestling yeah, promo what, that what, I would what, cut. what reviews match oh these questions keep coming thank you guys um canadian five dollars what reviews match you personally example i am the i am a mix of a 66 barafuda and 2014 malibu oh you're pouring more brews yeah yeah sorry. take it easy on that because we got another beer to drink then oh that's right yeah, yeah. um mm. Nice. What reviews match you personally? Example, I am a mix of the 66 Barracuda and the 2014 Malibu. Like, I, I think it's the PT Cruiser, really, because when I get deep into American modernism, it's a hole I don't come out of. Ew, that's a good line. Damn. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nuinya? Sorry, man. None your business. <laughs> oh, delightful. I love that name. Thank you. Was the Tesla Model 3 break update? Uh, a paradigm shifter for the auto industry no it was just a software issue and like minor hardware issue it's like this this would be a normal recall for anybody else but because people are gunning for elon because he's his tweet game is really bad <laughs> um you know he doesn't know for a genius he doesn't know how to internet so um so so they're trying to stick him to it a little bit like that Uncle yeah. SJ, five dollars. Thank you, man. Hey, Thank Mr. You. Regular, do you like any Swedish cars okay. at all? Hence Volvo or Saab cars. So, if which cars Volvo eight fifty R or Saab Eros? Uh, Swedish cars, apart from like the Volvo eight fifty G wagons and like the turbo bricks, um, those are what I like. But again, they didn't really exist that much growing up, so I don't have any immediate. Um, uh, Oh. I have fond memories of them. Apparently in the chat, uh, David Patterson said, if you're going to call, do it as soon as he's about to go off. Not sure when that'll be, but we'll keep an eye on it or something. He's about I don't to know. go off. I'm, tr I'm trying to think of like a wrestling I promo have... that I would cut of like, all right, first of all, let me tell you something, David Patterson. It's going to start here and it's going to start right now. My my partner over here. I need like a, I need like a do-rag or something. <laughs> My client, Brian, is one of the baddest men that you will ever meet on the face of this or any other universe. There are people in star systems that haven't even been discovered yet who don't want to cross this man. If they find a bridge to cross, they'll cross another one because they don't want to cross this man. And, and I'll tell you something else. If you want to meet this man live and only on pay-per-view, you're going to have to pay for the privilege because he's not somebody who's going to be taken lightly. And some other cliche about wrestling things. Uh, let's see. Um, on a scale of one to ten, my client is devastation. He is he is innumerable in the things that he. Oh my god! <laughs> Let me tell you right now, Dave Patterson. 
You think you're the king of this game? You think you can have your pretty face and your little beard, David Patterson? And you're coming around, you're gonna smile, and the ladies are like you, and they're going down. But I've been in this game longer. I got the skills, I got the body. Oh, I'm gonna lift you. Oh, you have to talk to my manager if you want more questions. Ugh. Yeah. All right, you already know the date. It's gonna be August 17th in the Louisville Gardens. And if you know what's good for you, you're gonna stay away from the ring. Because inside of this steel cage, I cannot contain this man. He will take you. And you are a very handsome man, David Patterson. But at the end of the day, you cannot take on this beauty and the beast incarnate in one man. I will never shave my back hair. It will be live and only on pay per view. And I hope you come prepared. I hope you've had your whey protein. I hope you've been eating your. Oh, there goes my <laughs> laptop. <laughs> Is it still running? Oh, internet. Internet. Uh, I hope you've been eating your carrots and I hope you've been minding your P's and Q's. <laughs> I don't know why. Why am I doing it in a southern accent? Like, what the hell am I doing? I, I love that you had that do rag in the first place. It's the most like thoroughly preposterous thing, um, but delightful. I don't need to call him. Either, either he saw that or he didn't. You almost have as much hair on your chest as I have in my ass crack. <laughs> That's the light. You haven't seen my ass crack. <laughs> Uh, uh. Oh, it says hurry up and call him. He's getting off. Yeah, like I think yeah, we're, we're, we're good. Him. Yeah. Um, See, I kind of wanted to do that and call him at the same time, but uh, it didn't really work for a wrestling promo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your WWE game is beyond any scale of level. <laughs> yeah. I would love if we got contracts out of this. <laughs> I'm like, hey, why don't you come on down to the Performance Center? Let's go, you know. Actually, no, Vince McMahon would never mess with us because we aren't like 6'1". Uh, that deserves a beer. That does deserve a beer. You've, you, you've done admirably. Um, yes, but uh, can you... Oh, Mason Fox. Where are all these people getting these great names from? Mason Fox. It's a great name. Um... Can you guys do a test drive of a 1955 Chevy Bel Air if possible? Um, I mean, anything's possible if it's offered to us, but it's one of those things where it has to be offered to us first. And uh, I made a list of like the top 20 cars that I was hoping that we'd be able to do within the next calendar year, that it's all predicated on people actually um, offering them to us. And I think in, and that was last year. And in the past calendar year, I think we've done like five of them, um, which I mean, you know, that's not bad. It could be better though, but and everything could be better. You can't focus. You got to accentuate the positive like Bing Crosby. Um, but yeah, uh oh the uh, there, beer. there were uh was was were um super chats okay um that i forgot to snap all right how would you uh, um nage na giorgio 2 how would you feel about a panther platform sleeper i'm thinking about slowly building up my grand marquee with a supercharged 5.42 v yeah it's fine yeah do that do that 8.8 .8 rear end 355 gearing you'll be fine um, it's 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 it it doesn't matter if a road is well traveled, it still will do you good. It still would do your feet good to walk the earth. Eh, that doesn't really work. Just listen to uh, abdominals participation prerequisite. Ah, and uh, good man, yeah, good choice. Oh, it's uh, not a problem to do what others done. This uh, is Victory Sour Monkey, ooh. not the Golden Monkey. But this was given me today by a through hiker in exchange for driving him around in the where Falcon. Did, where did the through hiker get it? Oh, we went to Rudders. Oh, nice. Um, Florida Rain Rail Fanning 812 asks, oh, and uh, donated $1.99. Mm, nice pucker. Thank you so much. To... Um, wait, it says one ninety nine on mine, but four ninety nine nine on yours, but it's the same question. Hey, guys, uh, 56 Bel Air or 76 Chevette? Maybe he asked it again. Um, uh, I would say Bel Air. Yeah, Bel Air gives I like you more engine options. I mean, people do put LSs in Chevettes, but 
you know, you're going to have more fun with a Bel Air. 76 Chevette would be nice and if you're trying to, like, imp impress, like, supercar hipsters or just Justin Kramer. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh. Cinnamon McSquirrels said, what engine produces your favorite exhaust note? Uh, the Century V12. It was, my, well, I mean, that was pretty nice. That was pretty That nice. was very nice. Although I, I still laugh, sometimes I just queue it up. And I say this like it's been out for years. It's literally been out for two weeks. But uh, welcome back to the United States of Yeah. <laughs> just like that sound of Man. tearing ass through uh, things. My most favorite exhaust note. See, I like deep notes with no crackle. Hmm. What did I just want? I like the sound the Chevy, Chevy SS made. Um, uh, yeah, I like a good cam rumble. See, I don't really care much. I'm going to have to go with the 440. Uh, 440 going through the uh, the uh, the Dodge Coronet. That was pretty damn good right oh, there. Yeah. Uh, Brendan Fitzpatrick. It showed up on mine, but I don't know why it's not showing up on yours. Okay, uh, but it's it was, on yours. Yeah. Oh, it was because it was only... Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, thank you, Brendan Fitzpatrick, for $2. Uh, what car won't you drive? Uh, I think we answered this before. I mean, the car that isn't going to be like unroadworthy, something we've already done, a car that I won't drive. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Those little $2 ones, that they, they, they go they way too right fast because they don't... They don't hold themselves like the other one. Hi, guys. Going to be at Chrysler Nationals this year. Yes, I am going to be at Chrysler Nationals. I need to film a, finish filming a, a first-gen Dodge Neon. Uh, and I also need to film which Viper is best Viper. <laughs> Thanks for the two hours, man. Let's see. Uh, this one is uh, Kevin Brown. You guys are great. Sad Mr. Regular didn't quite like the Miata MX-5 NC, but thoughts about the NC with the power retractable hard top? That was an option? Uh, new to me. Donated seven seventy seven, so thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, all sevens, delightful. Is is that uh, was that a UK only thing? I I don't know. I, I I think it's a good idea. I think that adds a bit of weight, but for people who need it, uh, that's one of the reasons my mom bought the uh, Mercedes SLK two thirty because it had a power hardtop. So I think that's a good thing. I think that would help a lot of people who are on the fence between a Miata and something else. Um, um, thank Flart you. To, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry uh, thank you to Workforce Two Fifty for two ninety nine. He just wanted to say Avenger video became an inside joke with friends. So always happy when that can happen. So yes, sorry. As you Florida were. Rain Flanning eight one two says EDM SD two forty twos and GP thirty eight twos are still the best. By the way, you guys are gonna love the sound of a five sixty seven. And 645 Prime Mover. Are those those big engines he was talking about before? Uh, yeah, I think so. What, I'm pretty sure. Did he uh, say what they were in? Did Florida guy? Eh. Yeah, and, uh, did, just in the chat. Like, don't you don't have to give anything else. Yeah, just, yeah like, please just, don't. Uh, yeah. Um, this next one is from Gregory Marsh, who says. Um, Sorry I'm off topic. Always wondered. At the beginning of the 66 Barracuda video, you say, hey, it's Undine's car. Who is that and what did that mean? Oh, Undyne. That's a video game character from a game called Undertale. I can't believe I said it. Undine. Uh, she is a fish, so it's a fish joke. Oh, that's not Goat Mom? I've never played Undertale. Yeah. I know vaguely of it. Um, nah, goat Mom is Toriel. Oh, Toriel. Uh. Yeah. It's the name of Evangeline Lilly's terrible character from The Hobbit. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Huh. Uh, Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thank you so bucks. much. Willy Wonka, 928D. Thanks for the five bucks, man. Love you guys. Uh, what is something other than cars that's since gone away that you miss? Wait, what? What is something in other cars that's since gone away that you miss? Either a feature or design or characteristic. You know, you know I'm a sucker for tape decks. Mm. I'm a sucker for every function of the car having its own button. That's what I like about my dad's Toyota Cressida. Now, granted, that's a lot of stuff that can go wrong, and I, and I get touchscreens. But I'm glad the three knobs for the HVA system is still hanging around. How hard do you want it? How hot do you want it? And where do you want it? <laughs> do you want air conditioning or not? 
I never hardly even hit the recirculation button. No. Um, well, That's like I, the skunk button. Mine doesn't... My car does not have a recirculation button that I've found. Mine is literally just like AC, uh, max AC, and it's just kind of... It's... Uh, have you ever not used max AC? I just use regular AC unless it's a profoundly hot day. Oh, really? Or if okay. I have my nephew in the car and he's complaining. Oh, um, okay. Because children. Yeah. Uh, but Eli yeah. Spookish just gave us five bucks. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Uh, Red Speeder 98 says, love your reviews. Ever thought about coming to Michigan? Yep. Yeah. I kind of want to go to the Upper Peninsula just to say I'm there. Yeah. And what is your thoughts on the Pontiac G8? I love it. I think the interior is c- 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 crap. <laughs> But it, it moves quick, doesn't it? Um, God, that Pontiac G8 interior is this plastic GM shit show. That's why the Chevy SS is so much better. The interior is nice. But I wouldn't own a G8. I looked at them. And even like clean ones, the interior just looks like garbage. Yeah. And you get it just feels like there's slime on the inside of that plastic dash, that plastic everything. Thanks for five bucks, man. Ben makes a good point that normal radios that can be swapped out are becoming like rare. Din radios. Yeah. Everything should be a din radio. That's why I'm not going to get a Mazda 6 GT wagon as a new camera car because they don't have din radios. And some people down there are saying max AC is recirculation. So uh, sorry, I I should read my owner's manual. Weird Ford thing. Yeah. Uh, Weasel said, cool, I should be there with my 364 speed dart sporcer. Oh, Doster with a bulge. Let me know what time. Like noon. Noon is generally our show up to anywhere yeah. time. Or, I mean, just follow um, Twitter, like, at regular cars or at the Roman Nick. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to be on Instagram. I'm going to be Instagramming while I'm there. Oh, so, yeah. regular cars Instagram. Um, let's see. Oh, Florida rail fanning 812 says, I know I should stop giving shit out, but it's really the only way to get my questions and random train talk answered. The 645 is in the SD 40 dash two, I think. Um, mm, I don't know what that means. I'm gonna undo my belt a little. Hungry Moose. You put that in something. <laughs> Hungry. I'm gonna, like me just sitting, like it's a cutaway in the RCR video. Just me manspreading and just gonna say, I'm gonna undo my belt a little. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Yeah. So the new Mitsubishi Mirage. <laughs> Hungry Moose, uh, thank you for five dollars Canadian. It's, it's, oh, shit's about to go away. Do you? Th- well, oh, it's not gonna go away on mine. Uh, okay, do you think you'll ever come to Western Canada so I can bring out my 2011 Ranger and try to redeem the good name of my small truck? Do you think I'd ever, I think on a long enough timeline, we'd end up in Victoria, Canada. Oh, God damn it. I, yeah, I don't know the geography the of the great white north. Uh, it's not Ontario. Victorian pride. With I know what it is. God damn it. What's the, what's your California province? I I keep uh, oh, is it Victoria no. or is it British Columbia? Oh no, no! Every time I think of Great White, why North, do I know none of it? And I don't know what that is. Victoria is the of, oh, it's British Columbia, Al, Saskatchewan, Alberta, British Columbia, BC, because everybody calls it just BC. Oh hey, can I ask the chat a question? Um, is I just started watching um, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I'm uh, seven episodes in. I just want to hear if people think I should stick with it, and or if there are other anime recommendations I should be getting into, because I've been feasting on streaming services like i watched the netflix show safe where uh dexter tries for a british accent and uh more or less lands on the mark somewhere around there uh i finished uh this waste of uh, everyone thinks it's brilliant but i think it's kind of a waste of time called south cliff um it's this four episode british series about a murder or a shooting spree in a small town i i saw 13 reasons why season two where the biggest takeaway other than um 
the fact that I'll never get those 13 hours back is that they ruin a perfectly good 68 Mustang, like a gorgeous Mustang for no reason. I'm so like that show. Also, they like do terrible things. To wrecking classic cars is a thing I want to stop. Yeah. In movies. You're not impressing me at all. John Wick gets a pass. But that's the end. It doesn't add to anything. You know, Blues Brothers 2000 <laughs> set the world record for the most amount of cars crashed. Which, who was even asking for a sequel without John because Belushi? Because they, they, were, they were beating their original record. Oh, all right. Like, for the time, the original Blues Brothers had the world record of the amount of cars crashed. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, people... But Gregory Marsh says, I'm the proud owner of a 2009 uh, 370Z Sport Touring 6-speed coupe. Your review of the 370Z seemed to be from the perspective of an excess terrestrial. How come? Yeah, the whole thing was a reference to, to K-Pax, the movie. Mm. With the... Oh, K-Pax. What was the car that you did the entire thing in uh, as pro from K-Pax? In the Nissan 370Z. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just, it's yeah. the same one they're talking about. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was like... I remember, the when thing we, and... I remember when people said my resting voice sounded like Kevin Spacey and that was a cool thing for a while. And now it's... Oh, oh, oh no. no. All I got to do is drop it down like this and I'm fine. No, drop it down like that and you're Adam Scott, which is a great thing. Adam Scott That's... is a very talented actor. Michael... He is. Michael Harmon, $5, said, watch Mega... Megalobox. Box it's on Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll. Old school anime art style and great story. Well, that's all. Next. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. There, there have been some uh, sub suggestions Thanks along the bucks, line man. of like, um, you know, watch Fooly Cooly, uh, the Magus Bride, um, other things. Gunnar de Ross in the regular chat going by. Which is better, a TJ or a Miata? Miata. TJs. I mean, y you're dealing with antiquated tech, and Miatas are the same way, but the parts are just plain old cheaper with Miatas, man. Mm. Uh, did you get the ten dollar one, James uh, Murphy? Is that it? Oh, ten dollars. Yeah. Thanks, James. Uh, thanks for doing RCR in the podcast stream. Would do a Chevy Spark review. Uh, would a Chevy Spark review be a meat review or philosophical PT Cruiser? It's however the car presents itself to us, unless we have like desires to do it, like on the way, uh, that sort of thing. Weston Williams donated six nineteen. Booyaka, booyaka, 619. Uh, what, what's that from? Uh, it's Rey Mysterio's theme in WWE. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know who that is or what it means. I'm sent, uh, Rey Mysterio just means King Mystery in Spanish. Uh, I'm sending you 619 because that's the price of an OEM cam bolt to undo the awful camber on this 16 STI I just bought. <laughs> uh, did, did you have to settle for price, man, Weston, to buy the STI you wanted? You had to buy one that was just boy racered out, West and it sucked. <laughs> uh, three fifty one. Tree fifty. There we go. Did you get my email about the one twenty eight i? Have tree fifty. <laughs> uh, I'd have to check my email. Yeah. As long as it's formatted correctly, it was saved. Yeah. What parts? What part of the country you're in? Uh, I'm ta I'm, I'm assuming that's a BMW one twenty eight i. BMW. Were they even turbocharged? Let's see. I know like the 320i was oh, turbocharged. You got him. <laughs> Workforce 520. Thanks, man. I think that people do 499 because that's the lowest price that will that it will hold at the top. The 2006 2007 Saturn View Honda V6 has ratchet tie downs. Oh yeah, we were talking about that. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not driving a Saturn View. Nah. There's no chance. A Honda V6 what? Honda V6 wagon? I'd be down for something like that if it had metal tie-down loops that actually bolted to the body. Ratchet tie-downs. Ratchet tie-downs, I think of tie-downs that wear booty shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> oh, God. People of Walmart. Yeah. Six, 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 six. Favorite flavor of wings? I have a specific flavor that I like that the Brick House serves. It's Cajun Asian. Hmm. Now that sounds interesting. Now they're not mixed together. Um, I get twelve wings, and I get half of them are Cajun flavored, and half of them are Asian flavored, which is a kind of creamy, sour, sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. But when our flavors combine on the plate as they bleed together, <laughs> I get a taste festival. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing. It goes well with uh, like Chatty Monk's Brewing. Yeah. They always and, have tap on tap there. And mine is just a uh, regular old barbecue with like blue cheese dressing. But I don't get down with wings anymore because, again, like I'm on a diet. So like I've lost all of five pounds. In, like I've lost more than five pounds, but I keep saying five pounds because I don't want to like put a number out there and then be held to the number of what I'm losing. Mm. But like I'm changing a bunch of things about my life and it's very like weird and different and it's an adventure and it's I feel better because I go to the gym and I have weird smoothies made out of foreign things like kale. And if a if a I don't know, I drink smoothies that taste like long clippings, but I don't mind it because it gets better. It's like a dance with dragons where Jojen Reed has to eat that weird paste. And at the first taste is nasty. And the second taste is a little bit better. And the third is delicious. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Paul Fabish. Fabish uh, says, and we'll get to the other one that's running out. Uh, for gas, when you're sitting on I-90 in Chicago, one of the slowest roads in America. Is that the road that I had the panic attack on because I had to pee, but I couldn't pee? I don't know. We were somewhere around Millennium Park when that happened. I don't know if that's I-90. And you immediately, like, finish, uh, tossed out whatever was left in the cup and like, <laughs> handed me the cup. And then I'm like, Brian, I can't go. They're looking at me. And I, I'm just like, it was the dumbest the door- reason to ever have a panic attack. But still, it was, like, full ventilating and weird. Uh, thanks for five bucks, man. Thank uh, you so much. I-90, awesome. Gas money. We're probably going to fly in, but then it's going to be plane ticket money. Mm. And money, I think our camera guy and helper guy is going to be Mike Steinberg. Another quick question. I just got my class one Canadian version of a CDL. If I was ever in Pennsylvania with some spare time, would you like to review my semi trucks? Semi trucks are tough to do uh, in Pennsylvania because I would need to be running a CDL. And I think at the very least, I would have to have my medical card and, and an air brake endorsement of which I have none of these things. Um, I could get Carrie Klakowitz to drive the car for me. She has all of that equipment, and we could do something that way. I want to drive a semi-truck, because who the fuck doesn't? <laughs> but, you know, they're laws, man. Um, yeah. I drove Carrie's box truck once, and but that was just around Cabela's parking lot. And I drove the RV. RVs get around the rule, and I think there's some lobbying involved, but that thing was like 39.9 feet or something just under it and it had air brakes and but there's a weird rule about air brakes um for some reason i can drive the rv it's weird um it's it's really logistics man i fuck yeah i want to drive a semi truck and i want to say i'll be able to know how to work one of those things even if it had an automatic it's great i want to say that i i drove a manual on that i mean logically the thing would be to me to expense like truck driving school <laughs> um View V6 is a Honda V6. Oh, really? The Saturn View used the Honda V6? Thanks, Workforce 520, uh, 499. Um, also, went to review my Saturn Ion. I, I did a POV video of the Saturn Ion Redline. I thought it was fantastic. I mean, a full video of an Ion would definitely be, I think, they're the ugliest wheels ever put on any car. Those four spoke wheels don't look good at all. They, they, they make the wheel look like it's going to bend even in a worse way than those weird like three spoke wheels because the viper had three spoke wheels but then there's like guys in ford probes i think that's what i should do tomorrow um in addition to just like um i don't know if i'm gonna do rcr goes to ford nationals because i've been there a bunch of times i mean but i'm I, gonna do a video okay because i have some i the ideas of it if i see certain things that i want to see there yeah i think tomorrow at ford nationals which we're gonna be at ford nationals just say we're gonna roll in at noon we're gonna wake up when we wake up yeah we're probably gonna stay up it's already 11 p.m yeah um i'm not even really that drunk i mean neither am i really i sound it big i always sound it because i have a lisp so it makes my tongue feel heavy uh then these questions are about to go away um sorry uncle sj says i'm not sure if this question was asked before but which car have you had the most fondest memories riding on Oh, I actually know. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so uh, the Lotus Elise, which was the Christmas... That $5 is about to go away. So oh, go we're going to talk about fondest memories in a whole uh, right, aisle sevens one. Hey, doing a trip up to New oh, Hampshire yeah. or New England anytime yeah. soon. I'll be in your area the first week of July. 11 Mini Cooper Clubman S. 
Um, well, no plans to go to New England anytime soon, but we'll work on it. Yeah, no. Um, but, Again, we, we keep saying Boston all the time. Yeah, but because Boston, we've never been you, north. we just can't film. There's just no room, man. It's weird. We may um, all the way go up to Vermont. <laughs> or I don't know. I may go if 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 Farah ever goes skiing at Killington. I'll go up there, but he wouldn't want to do any like car stuff up there because yeah. that would be a vacation for him. Mm. So there's that one weird brewing that we were talking about when Jeff Wiseman was here, and that one brewery up in Vermont or something that you have to travel along a dirt road for forever, and then you get to this brewery, and he brought a bottle of it here, and it was fabulous. Yeah. The um, fabulous, like George Michael in his prime. <laughs> in his prime, that was a talented, handsome man. Yeah, and I have no problem saying that. But yeah. it's um, okay. Oh, the previous question. Okay, so fondest memories writing on it was the um, Lotus Elise, which was the Christmas special one year, and it was because we went to go write somewhere, and I don't remember where, which is funny at a thing of like mm. talking about fondest memories, but it was coming back, and it was night, and night had fallen, and you'd put in the uh, uh, closing time, Tom, the Tom Waits album, and it started playing Lonely, and uh, I was writing in my notebook, as this song was playing, the lone, lonely eyes, lonely face, lonely, lonely in your place. And, and it was just like such this weirdly beautiful. I thought that I knew every, I can't sing. Yeah, I, 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 and I can't remember the lyrics offhand. I thought but... that I knew everything there was to about lonely or something mm. like that. There's like hardly any lyrics to that song, but Waits just... Oh, I'm off, off mic, sorry. There's hardly any lines to that song, but he just drags them out. Yeah, he's, he's such a brilliant He was lyricist. 20 freaking three oh, when, he, when he wrote that album. He's like early 20s when Tom Waits wrote an album from the perspective of a man who had a life hard lived. I've, I'm 10 years removed from that and I couldn't do it now. Of like that He's in his early twenties when he wrote fucking closing time. But some people have the gift. They can. They got some, it. You know that if you just have it or you don't. Right. And it's like he writes songs that are literature in a mm -hmm. weird way. Like it just comes across in these like turns of phrase that right. I couldn't imagine. Uh, Gregory Marsh. I'll get to your question in a second. I just need a gush about Vic Ruggiero. <laughs> like like meeting him and shaking his hand he's got hands like justin kramer they're amazing like big and soft and oh man <laughs> man crush and he like i was talking to somebody else who was in the one of the opening acts uh for the slacker show at mr smalls in uh pittsburgh or rather uh millvale and uh the opening act said yeah he was talking to vic and vic says yeah i'm getting divorced again and it's it's that weird artist thing that yeah. Vic can Vic has been incredibly uh, that matter of fact way of saying it. Yeah. Um. I, oh, it's the word everybody uses. Prolific. Ah. Uh, f and slackers have been going for almost twenty years. Damn. Like like nineties is when they they got together and they're still playing. And they That's... still play from they still play songs from like the first and two albums gleefully. And they they make a livable wage doing this. Mm. That's what's impressive. It's a to big me. band too. For for it's not it's not a four piece. It's like a six piece band or something like that. Of like maybe not everybody knows about them necessarily, God, but enough yeah. know about them that they can continue to do this for twenty yeah. years, and that they can like sell. Well, I'm just like projecting, but maybe it was a sellout. Sell yeah. out, Mr. Smalls, and you know, yeah, I don't know. Ever been to uh, Gregory Marsh? Ever been to Cardensburg and or Pete's Township, PA? I'm sorry, I guess I haven't. I don't know where those places Cannonsburg, are. Cannonsburg, Peters Township. It's about 35 minutes south of Pittsburgh. Washington, PA is a little further south of them as a reference. It's weird. Uh, the amount of places that we've been, there are a ton of places in our own state that I haven't... Because uh, Pennsylvania is deceptively huge. Yeah. Now, like, it wasn't until I met you uh, that I learned how much... Um, or how big Alaska was. Because in my head, Alaska was like this piece, almost like this thing at the end of the map <laughs> that like you don't really think of how big it is relative to oh, everything else because, you know, it's Alaska. Um, and it's not part of the contiguous United States. And so you don't think about it that much. But um, at the end of the day, it's like it's 
how how many times the size of Texas is it or something like that? I can answer it's, that with my globe yeah. that I have. It's some absolutely preposterous size that, you know, you could live in Alaska all your life and only ever see maybe 2% of it. Yeah, and, Alaska's way bigger than Texas. Yeah, by orders of magnitude, which is kind of weird to me in that, like... Where's my... No, my digital caliper's in the garage. It's oh. almost like another country. Especially the way that you described it to well, me. Well, yeah, yeah. In that, like, was... the kids are unspokenly obedient. And, yeah. you know, uh, everyone is very... Um... Excluding the peninsula, Alaska, like, I'll bet there's a YouTube in, like, search term. Let me see. Uh, like, how big is Alaska? <laughs> uh, I'm just holding my fingers here from Alaska... Okay, from Barrow, Alaska, on top of Alaska, and I'm not including the Aleutian Islands, down to the peninsula, that is... Okay, here's how tall Alaska is. From the bottom of Texas, from the dick of Texas, the top of Alaska reaches to northern Nebraska, reaches to the border between Nebraska and South Dakota. Or that's the equivalent of from New Orleans to Chicago mm. is how tall that fucking state is. That's an amazing amount of like just surface Now we area. just did up and down. We didn't do side to side and we didn't include the Aleutian Islands. Could you imagine RCR Alaska? Like it would be logistically impossible. Uh, you, well, okay. You... <laughs> oh. Most people's Alaska who live in Alaska is just... Lost Anchorage to Fairbanks and the two highways that go in between them. But that's one third of the size of Alaska. In, in, in most of Alaska, there's fuck all. And that's why it's incredible. And people go on their boats and they freaking look at the whales. Great. There's, there's some dirty, dirty parts of Alaska and that's the real Alaska. I, I will go back to Alaska at some point. It's a hellscape of a flight. I think you can go Chicago to Anchorage. That's the way I came oh, back. Oh, that's right. You have a stopover, don't you? Well, if we're going to go in the bush, yeah. But, um, like, you, there's two ways to get to Anchorage. Um, you're either going to go to Seattle first, which is five hours, about thereabouts. It's, it's like another L.A. flight. Yeah, I, yeah. Philadelphia to Seattle. And then you get on another four-hour flight from Seattle to Anchorage. Or you get on a hellscape six and a half hour flight from uh, Chicago to Anchorage. And um, don't feel rushed. I'm screenshotting every uh, new uh, burgundy uh, burnouts again. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. You're you're keeping the Falcon. You're not you're not only keeping the uh, the. <laughs> you're keeping the, me gassed too. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, 2002 Firebird V6 Turbo. Official car of lying on the resume about graduating college and still getting the job. Dude, lie on your resume. No one checks that shit. I, and I wish I had learned this sooner that someone had told me this in college that no one checks this and no one cares about references. No. Otherwise, I would have been so employable before this point. And that, like, they ask... I was applying for jobs where they ask for your curriculum vitae, which is, like, your... Basically, your transcript, more or less. Yeah. Like, and I'm like... what? what what do you need that for, really? It's just... Do you mind uh, if I point the fan toward us? Oh, no, I don't mind at I all. I hope it doesn't hurt the mics. Let People should let us know if it hurts us. Yeah, uh, let us know... It's so nice right here, because it's blowing the cold yeah. air in from the... So $15. Thank you, William Jackson. Uh, yo, guys, I've loved RCR forever. Any chance of a review of the Mazda Speed Protégé or regular Mazda Protégé for those who don't want Civics but secretly envy them? Um, I mean, it's the same answer that I would give anything of like, it all depends on what people offer us because we can't do anything that people don't offer. You know what I mean? And it's kind of, um, I mean, oh wait, yeah, we did a speed six and yeah. well, which isn't a protege, but that's, I crossed a protege, which was actually on, uh, my, the, I'm not going to name the avenue, but like it was literally, and I had to stop because it was, um, Mazda Protege, the official car of the discount food market. 
I was taking my mom to dinner because she wanted to eat at like an actual Thai restaurant. So I'm like, let's go to the Thai restaurant. And so I took her to a Thai restaurant and there was this orange, mustard orange, like nacho cheese colored car there. And I stopped because like, I knew, I part of me knew what it was, but part of me wanted to just make sure that like, okay, this car is actually in my place. Bernie um, Burnout says, I did that light on a resume and now I have a 17 hour job. See, well, well there you go. There, there you, you go. go. There you go. Oh, a Frackville Joe. There was a guy, there was a comment earlier, I think while you were like getting your food about how, uh, DJ Double Lunch is greater than Stan the Man. Dude, DJ Double Lunch. You're supposed to like DJ Double Lunch. Who doesn't like... Di like Dude, he's getting you to do the Munch Crunch Punch... The, the <laughs> Munch Crunch Bunch Munch. <laughs> like, that's the whole point of DJ Double Lunch is he's your local... Like, he's your guy, your radio guy. Dude, I I do... Lo I did local radio, and uh, if... You know, as crazy as DJs are, I kind of miss it. And... If I ever stop taking this MMA class on Friday, I'll probably do local radio again. It's it's so bizarre. And people there, God bless them, they take their radio so seriously. But like our podcast here like has like more draw than my local radio station has on off peak hours. Yeah. And even like on on peak hours when we review a car in the early on uh, mornings yeah you know i think like part of it is remembering uh the the spiel like that it's locked into your brain forever now of kind of uh you were listening to the radio voice of could sound university k or could sound broadcasting at 88.3 fm 1670 am and online at kor.kutsound.edu it's like how the you are watching rcr new zealand is burned into <laughs> yeah. now of like you are it's not burned into mine i didn't have to listen to that you do yeah. uh oh schmidt thanks for two bucks man I'm curious, what kind of beers do I usually like? IPAs and the hoppier, the better. You like the really hoppy beers. I like the really stouty, like porters and stouts, like the dark beers that are kind of like, almost like a meal unto themselves that are like chewy and like almost like, you know, it's just very much. Now, granted, like, uh, which reminds me, there was a question earlier that wasn't a money question from a guy named uh, okay. um, Benjamin Goodman who asked beer or liquor, and I'm slowly turning. David in Irwin can go suck my car cock. IPAs are gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, You're good, man. Thanks, but, thanks for hanging around. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm. Did turning, I ever find a golf art review? No, I haven't. Sorry. I'm slowly turning into a liquor guy. Like, well, okay. I'm it's turning. Not too bad. I have gin in the fridge. I'm turning into a wino. Like, okay, my, my uh, art school girlfriend who I had when I met you, who, like, we used to hang out together. I know you don't remember. You don't have to worry. Like, her name was Danielle, right? And uh, I remember the name. Super, like, really cute. But Freaking she, off mic again. she was just like, I don't know. We didn't really get along. So whatever. Um, it, and not her fault. It was not her fault. Like, it's fine. Um, it's just people, like, drift and whatever. Uh, but we used to go to chef allen's like the three of us right and um she was like obsessed with gin and i didn't get it because i'm like you know early 20s when i met I got, like i've known you for like eight years no 10 years now there we go i met you in 2008 uh so yeah uh yeah. it was kind of strange in that it took me until i hit my 30s to kind of like get gin to like understand intellectually why people like fuck with this thing <laughs> and you know but before then it was just like art school girlfriend loves gin and she drinks it straight and it's like Ugh. yeah she didn't mix it with anything it was like her favorite thing in the world yeah and i can't she just, i can't drink gin nate yeah it's I mean, not happening um roman have you ever had jim beam double oak bourbon i have and it's delicious it's very um like at the risk of like repeating the thing it's oak e it's just like it tastes like very uh, it's wood uh accents and very much you know paul says hendrix gin is amazing i will agree hendrix gin i can take a little sip of that without uh without puckering straight mm. My go-to gin, honestly, is Gilby's, and that's what's in the fridge right now because I've been drinking gin and tonics at night, and uh, that's, like, if... As into my 30s, when it comes to liquor, I like two things. I like bourbon, and I like gin. Everything else I don't really care for. I, I try straying from it, 
I try uh, trying different blended whiskeys and stuff. Like I'll have, you know what? I'm down to straight two things. It's either regular gin of which I will either make gin and tonics or um, martinis. Yeah. Or it's going to be Old Crow whiskey. Oh, okay. You can't really go wrong with Old Crow. The same it's way, cheap, but it's good. Like, you can't really go wrong with Wild Turkey either. There was a question earlier that I feel like you might have some opinions on that there's not enough yingling in the room. And I know that, like, yeah, disturbing lack of yingling in the room. And for me, it's like I haven't completely gone off yingling in favor of trogues yet but i know mm. that like you are kind of i'm off yingling, team yeah. trogues yeah now and i'm still kind of team yingling i love trogues don't get me wrong but you know it's kind of hard to really uh let go of it because it's so pennsylvanian i think uh -huh. um uh if you guys ever come to new hampshire i07 thanks for five bucks man thank you if you guys ever come to new hampshire we can go on some brewery adventures lots of new ones up here you can try and do the kank is that some hallucinogen? I don't know. Some weed? Yeah, and where's up here? All right. Um, do you, you like those really colorful fruity drinks? I wonder drinks? if I can score something for like the... Um, I shouldn't be talking about that. I don't really do like fruity drinks except for um, screwdrivers. But like, okay, once you go on a diet, you realize like... Well, even before you go on a diet, like before you care, you know that orange juice is like more sugar than any reasonable person should ever have so it's like i don't know uh will robertson look up the alaska marine highway actually though you can drive cars on it and it leaves from bellingham washington it stops in all of the main cities in southeast alaska and prince rupert british columbia it's super beautiful thank you for the comment and for the ten dollars thanks for the ten bucks alaska marine highway bellingham washington stops on the major city. But it's not the Alcan. So it, it's like their Pacific Coast is what I'm getting at. Or, hmm. or what I think it's going to be. I have no loving idea. A uh, guy in the chat is going up. Oh, uh, Balin6 says, what about Tennessee Jack? I live next to the planet. It's good shit. Cool. I, I have no history of it, or I don't really know what it's about. Devin Storm says you should try a beer called Uncommon Stout. It has a coffee flavor to it. Devin Storm, are you is that like the are you the pro wrestler, Devin Storm? Uh I have no idea. Um let's see. Um I doubt you remember, but at the Auckland meet, the assholeish kind of person was the guy with the two-step MX5 and that comment just oh. Also, how do you like the New Zealand cops? Um New Zealand cops are fine. We did we didn't really encounter any. What New Zealand cops? Yeah, they were they were they were on the perimeter of the of the meet at the um car park but they didn't really like interfere they were just kind of like rolling by making sure people weren't up to mischief you know some dread purpose uh let's see skeeter rx8 thanks for five bucks man um ever consider a hot hatch as a camera car mark five mark six gti mazda speed three volvo c30 t5 I have flat fours, flat four seats, manual options, and fun. That's part of the reason why I stopped using the Honda Fit as a camera car, because the problem with a hot hatch as a film platform is the wheelbase is too narrow and the car bumps around and makes wobbly shots. If you look at video that was shot with the Honda Fit versus stuff that shot with the Subaru Forester, the Subaru Forester is way smoother. It's a virtue of a hot hatch typically has thinner tires, bigger brakes. Well, not in the case of the U.S. with my Honda Fit, no. But um, fatter tires and a longer wheelbase does a lot for smooth shots. And honestly, when you're out on the highway, it hurts your back less. That Honda Fit hurt my back after like an hour and a half. Mm. The, toy, um, the, uh, the Subaru Forester, I can go to Pittsburgh and my back doesn't really hurt. So... You know, I'm 30 and that's a thing. And even my shoulder is really tight. It's been like that for two days. And sitting on this futon isn't helping. My pecs are destroying <laughs> me right now. I just want to throw that out there. Because I've, do I've been doing the rowing machine like every day. And I don't think you're supposed to do it every day. Um, and I did the chest press too. Which uh -huh. has been killing me more. But it's also like 
it goes from an excruciating soreness where you can't move your arms to like when it dulls it feels really nice to like go like this because you can kind of feel like you know uh the scar tissue like breaking up and you can just be like nice and ah i should do some push-ups now now that i've been drinking i should have done do that I should have done push-ups to make, like, the guns look better. Just like... Yeah. I'm trying to look like Batista, long, I don't. <laughs> Long-time listener, first-time buyer. Thanks, The False Prodigy. I love your band. Uh, do fans em- embodying the material that you make the jokes about ever bother you? In, in what way? Do fans embody the material that you make jokes about bother you? Not really fans. Most of the fans that come out are super nerdish, so we get along. And I feel comfortable when everybody's socially awkward, knowing that there's no pressure. Because mm. um, a friend, that usually means you, uh, because I obsessively reference your material and it bothers me. That's kind of weird when people quote the jokes back to me, especially when I don't remember what they are. Yeah, my friend Tom, who I actually met at... Um Actually, we haven't actually met. We, we just, like, I met him through the Facebook page. Actually, I met his girlfriend through the Facebook page. But, like, I got into contact with both of them. And they're really cool people. So, shout out to Tom uh, Ferber. He was asking me, um... Actually, this might not have been Tom. It might have been someone else. Sorry. Uh, forgive me if I'm getting this wrong. But thank you, David Irwin, for $5. Thank you, David yeah, No Irwin. question, but thank um, you. But basically uh, said, how do you deal with people? Have anyone ever, like, recited your jokes back to you, and how do you feel about that? And it's like, well, most of the times when people refer to jokes back to me, it's not ones that I've written because, like, the really – like, okay, I've written some of the dirty stuff, like, I wipe my ass with my cat. <laughs> like, yeah. but – the, a lot of the dirty stuff like comes from like your particular my, and it's a genius thing to me because I wish I could do that like I sent you notes today and in the middle read them all right in the middle of the notes it's it says insert a non sequitur about this this and this but also I suck at non sequitur so do whatever you think is right you know like, I already filmed something yeah <laughs> and it's uh, it was filmed in the bathroom over there awesome I was sitting in the bathroom and then I just turned the camera on. Yeah. I gotta make sure these questions don't go away. Randy uh, Bish. Oh, Randy. Oh, oh. Will Robinson. Thanks for five bucks. Thank Will. you so much. Uh, it's a ship that connects isolated southeast Alaska to towns. Oh, is that like down where Juneau is? Because you can't get there by road? They call it a um, highway because it's the only way to get cars between the communities. Huh. Okay. Like, do I want to go to Juneau? Like, the thing about I know, I know after living in Alaska that time stops. Like, you can't think of time as it does here you're never in a rush which was great in alaska randy bish five dollars thanks you randy uh to hell with yingling i love yingling but yeah it has its place but contemplation is in its uh house uh this donation tax is deductible as a public service announcement to keep people from that terrible terrible taste you know the finish it does have a particular finish and even the uh, new uh, yingling golden pilsner as nice as it is is a traditional pilsner oh, i never tried it has it. that yeah they're serving at the brick house ah next time i mean next they'll time probably be yeah. serving, serving it for a while you know i ordered one i'm like this is a this is an okay pilsner but it has to stand in the shadow of trogue's uh summertime pills and it can't do it man uh, summertime pills is it's so ca- crisp ra- 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 yes <laughs> it's it's that yeah yeah i have no you know what summertime pills is if no homework was a beer <laughs> that, <laughs> oh like i feel like we're wasting great lines on this podcast <laughs> no um adam wilson says do a shot of gin for me because i have to work tonight i never i never shoot gin but for you, Adam, I will make a little tiny gin and tonic complete with lime. Very nice. Um, Very nice. I mean, because we might as well go to midnight at this point. It's like 11.35, yeah. 32. Um, uh, $10 question from the Pearls Prosny, longtime listener. Oh, we did this already. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, oh, there was a question. I'm going to do that for you All right. because I said I am. Someone earlier asked, and it wasn't a super chat question, but what is the favorite stretch of highway that you've ever driven on? And mine is the PCH when we were doing the trip to um, Portland. And um, I took over for the uh, 
uh, uh, basically, okay, when we went to uh, Portland, Oregon, we were doing the Pacific Fister. We started out, uh, well, we started out in LA, right? Yeah. All right, so, and we were making our way up. It was like 10 hours or so, and it was cut between me, uh, Brian, and our fixer, or not, well, our California fixer, Eric Pedersen. Shout out to Eric. Um, He's always been a fan of the show and he's been really good to us. And uh, he was really, it's almost beggars the imagination to say that he was 20 years old at the time because he was so much more mature than that. Um, but basically uh, we were driving in shifts and Brian took the longest shift because we kept like insisting like, hey Brian, we could take over. But anyway, he was saying how uh, you know, he, he was already driving. It's like, let me just keep driving. But there was a three hour stretch where I got to drive that was so gorgeous. Um, granted, there was this really bad, it lasted for like a half hour of just this farm country that smelled awful and that made me want to gag, but couldn't be any worse than like the treatment plants in Muhlenberg. So, or the mushroom factory, whatever it is in Muhlenberg, Pennsylvania. So I, uh, I just was so enamored of this and I was talking to Eric and we were listening to Andrew Day before she became like popular and all of her stuff was everywhere and you couldn't escape it. Um, so that was, oh. Take a swig. That's a gin tea. Oh, I would never know. Well, um, I didn't put that much gin into it, but you asked for me to drink a little gin. Oh. This will probably be my last drink for the night. Yeah. This will be my last drink for the and night. And this is a question that we've been asked a lot. Dr. Joan 5, well, Jones, uh, in, uh, thank you for the $5. In the Hayabusa video, you talked about the Speed Wars in Japan. Any chance you'll do a full doc video on it? Can't wait to see you here in Chicago. You know, man, when I'm on the treadmill and I load up uh, Get Busy Child by Crystal Method, I imagine that that's the... Uh, the uh, for your consideration uh, trailer for Japanese Japanese motorcycle speed wars of the 90s and I imagine the poster for that documentary being like the uh, poster for eight-legged freaks starring Brendan Fraser wait and uh, and um um oh god uh david arquette was in that too wasn't he he was yeah he was um uh the guy who was a former wcw champion of the world uh because they were going for a publicity stunt anyway sorry about that um oh hey brent aiken i'm mm. from the mushroom capital pa i smell mm -hmm. it a lot but i'm going to knobles tomorrow morning hey, oh hey, going to knobles knobles Fun fluted fantasy, Knobles amusement. Dude, did I ever tell you, like, when you made the Knobles video, that uh, how many comments you got that were like, what is that white thing in between the two waffles? Is it butter? Is it a brick of cream cheese? I'm like, on what? Has has no <laughs> yeah. one had waffles and ice cream before? Really? Is that a Pennsylvania thing? Like because like why would you think that we would eat like an enjoy a mm. giant hunk of butter and or cream cheese that is just completely like I, I don't know. Still haven't gone to Nobles yet this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it'd be fun just to take hikers on, just like put it in the notebook. Like yo, I will take anybody who wants to go to an amusement park tomorrow. I have a YouTube channel. I'm serious. I have a YouTube <laughs> channel. Like not referring to it's it's enough cuz it's nothing to go to Nobles. It's like It's oh, nothing. It's a very like what is it? Is it like it's not free, but it oh, it's free? There is no entrance fee. You All just, right. There's no parking fee and no entrance. Fee. It's, but I mean, it's like, carnival style. You pay yeah, as you, you go. pay as you go. Okay, yeah. yeah. I I forgot to mention like any of that on my uh, survivor. Okay, so over the weekend when I was in Richmond, I filmed another <laughs> Survivor audition video that uh, I never mentioned any of the YouTube thing. It was literally just, "Hi, I'm Nick Roman. I'm the greatest man who has never played the game of Survivor, and you need to cast me because I'm Puerto Rican, just like two-time winner Sandra Diaz Twine. And this is why. And X no X Y and Z." of why you need to cast me even though like 
I have no business being on Survivor, but let's be realistic. It's my favorite show. It's, uh, I know the strategic element of the game. I think you would like kill on Survivor because the people who do best on Survivor are the people who, who've never watched it and who I've never watched a single thing. Yeah. And but from what you tell me, it's like, you gotta be a bit of a lovable boob and people have to keep you on because they think you can bump. They, they think that they can bump you off easier later. Yeah, well, they think that they can beat you at the end. And that's not the point of like, you're athletic enough to do well in challenges, but you're also likable enough so where people would want to give you money at the end, but also you're not so like, you're not like so like, off like you're not off putting to the point where people will want to get rid of you is what i'm saying mm. like people won't view you as a threat of like oh, shit we got to get rid of brian like oh my god what if he gets to the end and that type of thing like if they ever did a blood versus water season where you bring your family on like none of my family is going to want to do it but i would love to like just bring you or if we do like the friggin amazing race because i'm basically like looking at get rich quick schemes <laughs> of, like this type of thing but yeah reality tv is a bad idea is sparky uh, as in Sparky, Sparky, yeah. is that Julia Johnson? How uh, do you got? No, this doesn't sound like a can't Sparky be. question. How do you guys handle car offers that are close to you, or, or offer to travel to you? The offer to travel to me are the ones that break my heart because I don't feel I'm worthy that you're gonna drive four hours to hang out in a parking lot with some introvert. So. How do you guys car offers that are close to you? The close ones are easy. Like, hey, we're over in the Lehigh Valley or hey, we're out in Harrisburg. That's easy. There's like no pressure on me. We can take our time filming stuff. Yeah. Um, they usually know the area anyway. Now, it's not a problem. That's why we like going places. One, it's like I love to travel. And two, a change of location is great. And three, we're in an area that the volunteers know well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cuts out half of the stress of explaining to them what it is we have to do. Uh, the review that's coming up not this Monday, but the Monday after, the guy came all the way from Rochester, New York, which is a five-hour-plus drive. And But the thing is, is that like he's a really cool guy, and I actually mentioned in my notes that like we don't normally get people who are this accommodating which we've been lucky you know in the sense that we've gotten a lot of um people who are just very respectful and they almost are kind of like us in the sense that like they don't want to be in anyone's way you know they don't want to like make demands on time beyond what's necessary and uh there are a lot of people who okay a part of the process is you have the walkie talkies you don't have to like tell them that often of hey get a little closer or hey get a little farther back it's that type of thing where people just immediately understand what the process is because they've seen enough of the videos and i remember this was years ago when i started i'm saying i'm gonna make a behind the scenes of what it's like to make a regular car review video and i never made that video because i felt like it gave away too much of what the process is not because the process is supposed to be mysterious but because i felt like okay Okay, they're gonna see where we do it they're gonna see how we do it and it's gonna be like this type of thing because in my mind I was making a video to alleviate some of the concerns of people who would submit and not know what they're getting into and not knowing what a shooting day actually looks like but it's okay because like you are very good at vetting people and so when you hear them on the phone or when you talk to them on the phone and confirm that yes this is a good person this is a cool person you can explain like this is what we're going to do this is how we're going to do it so that they're speaking and i mentioned this in my uh winter journal of like you speak with the the surety of like authority and it's a very reassuring thing to hear a voice of authority that speaks in that manner because you don't have to feel like okay i'm flying by the seat of my pants even though like sometimes we're flying by the seat of our pants but that's not the point it's like you get to know what you're going to do and what you what's expected of you basically so yeah. anyway sorry for the tangent no no please yeah lowell h thank you for the ten dollars thanks for the ten bucks man do you ever get a bit of automotive jealousy i started delivery for jimmy john's and after my 05 grand am got rear-ended i got a 15 cruise however i have co-workers with an ss is 300 and a gti what do why do so what that other people have different cars than you and from your perspective better cars than you 
you have a commuter car. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. An IS-300, I mean, if you want to get all shot and frightened about it, uh, is, I mean, it's going to be a little bit of a higher maintenance because Toyota doesn't really like to cross-pollinate their, uh, their, their part numbers. Um, GTI is kind of cool. Yeah. SS kicks ass. But, oh, do you have automotive jealousy of other people? I used to. But now that I've driven a lot of things, I don't. I'm... Mm, I'm really jealous a little bit of people who have houses and big garages. <laughs> but that's like really going up there. Oh, look at this guy. He's got a two-post lift in his house. <laughs> but then again, it's something to aspire to. Yeah. So I'm more jealous of people plural connections and connections I would have N nothing is quite as not empowering but nothing is is quite Eh, we'll go with satisfying. Nothing is quite as satisfying as having a guy you can call if you're in a jam and having multiple different versions of guys based on the jam you're in. Um, That's a good line. Um, it reminds me of the thing of like when we first met Matt Farah and how he always had someone to call and I said it's and I said this line and he's like you should save that line. It's that Matt Fair is the difference between knowing a guy and having a guy. Mm, and yeah. like, what's weird to me is that like when I went to the New York auto show, I thought that like, if I was going to see anybody, I would have to go up and sheepish, sheepishly remind them that, Hey, I'm Nick from regular car reviews or the Roman. But like, I went to go get, like I was making tea and, uh, because I guess I'm British now. And, <laughs> uh, no, I've been a total Anglophile all my life. But basically, um, Matt Hardigree came up to me. And it's like, hey, Nick, how you doing? I'm like, Hold, you, you remember me? Like, yeah. I And I wasn't expecting it. And um, it was one of those things of, like, there's someone that you, like, respect who, like, actually remembers you as an individual. Because this is the first time that I went to the auto show alone. And so, you know, I saw, like, Mike Spinelli, but he was from a distance. And I was kind of like... He was talking to people. I was like about to go up to say hi, and like he literally got ambushed by like three people who moved mm. in and were like, "Hey," blah, 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 blah. and so I just immediately moved on. I'm like, maybe I'll see him again. And um, it's one of those things where like I don't know. Part of it is like if you go to the New York Auto Show, part of it is for the networking. Like as a matter of fact, most of it is for the networking, but. It's also the thing of being able to say that, like, you know, people in the industry. Yeah. Um, in the not just like the automotive industry of manufacturing, but in the, the industry of the coverage, you know, of people who talk about cars, who know about cars, who, if you have a question about, like, how many times have we called Matt about, you know, issues that we've had about filming of how do you solve this problem that we have? He's a good guy who's like, okay, here's how you get around this or here's how you... I'm drunk. Yeah, yeah I'm getting that. <laughs> like, he is... Uh, my body's Gym, ability man. to metabolize alcohol is, like, out of this world. But, mm. like, basically with Matt, he's, like... And he never loses patience with us, which is the craziest thing about it. Like... People think that like we're sucking kneecaps about Matt Fair and we're we're really not uh, like I would not lie and say that a person is a good dude if they're really not but like Matt Fair like the first time that we fucking met the guy he made us dinner yeah he cooked for us yeah um when I was starting to feel like kind of like sleepy because like a moron I well not a moron but like I couldn't get any sleep the night before and I needed a little coffee to get my like kick stopped like he immediately was like hey let's go back I will like make you a French press because we were like nearby he 
he made me French press coffee. He did not have to do this. He literally drove us back to his house and made me coffee. Like, this is a man yeah. who doesn't need to, like, do any of the things that he does. And when we went to the Cars and Coffee with him in Burbank, he held court like an actual celebrity, getting mobbed by, like, so many people and handling it with the amount of... Like, I learned how to handle yeah. people at Cars and Coffee from him yeah. of, like... Or from the snake of just like <laughs> when that person walked up and hey, I hear regular car reviews is in town. Like, and we hadn't revealed our faces yet. Yeah. And he like totally kept it secret of like, like yeah, no, I they, hear they like left. he protected yeah. our identity and he didn't have to do that. And yeah. it was one of those things of like, that's why I will always like stick up for Matt Farah online, in person, whatever. Yeah, same here. Uh, um, yeah, he's a friend and he's a good man. Man mm -hmm. for all seasons. We haven't ignored uh, the real new man. I know that just disappeared, but I saved that one. Oh. If you want a good exhaust note, shoot down to King of Prussia and check out my Jaguar XKR in your inbox. Hmm. I, I will not deny that Jaguar can make some very angry, angry exhaust notes. I had this weird feeling lately about exhaust notes, like how much does it really matter now? What with Tesla and all? Uh, Oxnard XD, thanks for the five bucks, man. Thank you. Uh, which simulacra is best simulacra? Dude, it's the one you're living in right now, man. <laughs> I love the idea that um, this is a story where um, this was uh, two months ago, right? I go to my local bar and um, I'm just like, you know, grabbing a beer with a buddy of mine and Basically, I see a guy that I think I recognize, but I'm not entirely sure. I walk over and I'm like, Dr. Vogel? And like, I go over and I, should I not have said his name? No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, no, no, no. no, no. Do it. See, that's my, oh, hey, it's Dr. Vogel face. No. Like, I am always like trying to impress. We're talking about a professor of ours. A professor I'm of ours. I'm always trying to uh, impress Dr. Vogel as a surrogate father. Yeah, and he is um, okay. So, uh, brief history: Brian and I met in Doctor Vogel's class in, um, and I forget the spe specificity of the class. And I remember the first thing: Middle that, English. No, it was it was uh, it was downstairs. No, it was uh, modern. Like, oh, okay. it, it was like an American thing because that was the one where, like, okay, basically, I remember the wasn't American modernism. Possibly, yes. Um, because the first thing that I ever said to you, like, ever, was, okay, um, well, actually, no, this wasn't the first thing because it had to establish a prior relationship. So, um, we had met each other before, but, like, basically, we were reading The Reader, like, that movie, or that book that turned into a movie with Kate Winslet, which is the last one where she showed her, like, fronts and whatever. But, um, and I thought that's how you pronounce like your name but like it's just a john weird... glom there you go um and beats thank you anyway uh you had your camera with you that day and you took a picture of me and i still have that picture somewhere on my old hard drive of like that um of just like hey like i'm taking i forget the context of you taking this picture is that the one i took of you like by the stairwell yeah Dude, I still have that somewhere. Yeah, like I have the picture on my hard drive, but I don't have my laptop with me. Otherwise, uh, I wonder I'd if it's on my Facebook. Yeah, like, um, but basically, okay. Was that so, me shooting from the hip? Like right down there? I don't recall. Okay. Because um, I used to do that a lot like a dick. I was that <laughs> guy who would turn the flash off, although I used flash on you. And Yeah, you did. I, I never knew how much of a dick move that is to have the SLR and just shoot from the hip and go click. Oh, wait, why is it a dick? Well, I mean, it's, it's like a dick move if you don't people. tell them. Yeah. But you but told I, me. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you told me that I was like, I made this terrible smile. And I'm like, that's a terrible smile. Save it. And then you posted it on Facebook and I tagged myself. But so maybe it's on Facebook, but I don't know. Um, but basically, uh, I ran into. And Beats sends another. Thank you, five bucks. Yeah, and awesome. Beats. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, okay. I'll get back to. Uh, but basically, I ran into Dr. Vogel. I'm like, Dr. Vogel? And he's like, yes. I'm like, I'm Nick, I'm Nick Roman. Do you remember? He's like, yes, I remember you. Uh -huh. And I'm like, uh, do you remember like my friend Brian? He's like, yeah, I remember Brian. Like, uh, I'm like, and I literally like spent the next like 
15 minutes telling him what we've been up to since then and he had this like look in his face of like equal part surprise and like pride of like everything that uh, like i'm like literally like so many things that we learned in there about just um like american like expression of american uh uh what is it uh like just um oh god what is the term american uh exceptionalism there we go american exceptionalism like all this other stuff we've incorporated it into this like weird car review channel where we're trying to teach people about like you know english but about like loftier concepts in addition to kind of making like toilet humor like let's be real and he's like no i'm totally cool with that like and so it was so cool to have like someone that like you respect that much be able to like have that like i wish like i could have taken a picture of like the look when i was telling him what we've been up to to just like forward to you because it was like this mixture of like confusion and pride <laughs> of like you know of like hey they made it and like maybe they're not in the education system but like they're doing their thing and they're putting their degrees to use in a weird like super weird way but like i messaged you or i dm'd you on twitter about it and i was like holy shit like i ran into him tonight and it was like the small like the infinitesimal chance of me running into him on that day it was just like so weird to me and i remembered like and i told him like the one time of like we had this immense disagreement about um sarah orange jewett the uh county of pointed furs that i thought was the worst book of all time where is it and uh where he's is this fucking piece of yarn and that? he's like i could not disagree more at the time but he's like eh, i kind of see like you know um what is like it's a you see you see this where this freaking bookmark is it's like half a finger length away from the beginning i try to read this again <laughs> nothing's happening man i get it that that's the point it's the idea of maine isn't it yeah i have such immense respect for vogel and his taste but we could sit and talk for two hours and I'm not sure that he could ever bring me around on his opinion to this book as much as I respect him because this book is basically like it's a book where you're supposed to celebrate the fact that nothing happens like <laughs> like things happen this is but... like playing poker at a church picnic nothing's at stake exactly and if the language like if the book like if her pen could like you know if her pen went in hard <laughs> like like bronte's any bronte's pen went in like you know it'd be something but I'm just uh, like I can't get there. Do I, I listen to Skank and Pickle? Uh, thanks, M Beat. I'm assuming that's a ska band. I don't, but feel free to send me uh, an email with a link. I would love to listen to it. Skank and Pickle. Uh, I feel I should know this, being a guy who likes ska. Jeez, I can go all night about literature. Lowell H. Five dollars. Thank you. Regarding Tesla. Thanks, man. Uh, opinions on Model S being the most expensive luxury sedan to insure. See, I mean, it, it's it's a thing about parts manufacturers, and now people are being dicks. People are driving and falling asleep with with the uh, self driving mode on. You notice that car really didn't get dangerous until they put the self driving mode on. Yeah, but here's the thing. No, no, like, okay, so, um, I was an entertainment reporter for a few years, right? So that's how I ended up with like my pull quote on the back of the Walking Dead season five, but, um. I had to report on car stories too. And one of the car stories, or actually most of the car stories, were about fatality. Well, okay, not most of them. There were some, but they were about fatalities that had to do with um, self driving cars that where people put them on uh, autopilot and um, assuming that autopilot meant that the car would drive itself, which that's not what it means. Like, it's basically an up-jumped cruise control. Like, and people make these assumptions about what 
modern cars can do and they don't do the research and i know that's you think we're ever not gonna drive a car again is the gasoline car going away uh, are we all gonna drive the teslas now no man yeah. the technology isn't as advanced as you think it is it's very good yeah it's very good it's great i mean and we're making steps every time and uh, here's the thing my nephew said the weirdest thing to me the other day um because I had him help me film a part for the music video of Another Mustang Crash. And he said this almost like he didn't intend me to hear it, but like, um, he said like, and he's 10 years old. Uh, he said, I hope cars are still around when I learn how to drive. Like, is that, is that very assured way that only a 10 year old can say? Yeah. Like of just like, he thinks that like, he's not going to be able to drive a car when he's 16 because cars will be driving themselves. And his dream is to drive a car because he has been in love with cars since like literally the day he was born. Like the only thing that he wanted when he was like a child who was old enough to talk was to get tall enough so that he could drive go-karts at Slick Willys. And then once he drove go-karts at S Slick Willys, his goal was to get to the adult height to drive the adult carts that go faster. And now, and he is possibly like, it's almost like Anakin Skywalker in pod racing. It's insane the corners that he takes and the times that he shaves up. Like, he like basically in each heat the most racers that you can race are seven other racers he'll race eight racers and literally he will beat the next closest racer by four and a half full seconds and like of just like blazing past dudes <laughs> because he's taking these corners and he's only maybe like making the suggestion of a break and i'm like dude okay your times are great <laughs> but like i don't want you to crash like also you're not going to die because you're fully like you know strapped yeah, in this and is helmets. Go -karts, like it's go-karts and they govern the speeds with the little like push button thing but like th this kid is like such a gearhead and i got this um model internal combustion engine that we're going to build together um over the summer and well not over the summer it's not going to take the whole summer but like i kind of want to like create yeah that's such a weird way to put it because he's not my son but like he's my brother's boy but i i love him like he was my own son and i want to like share those things with him of like hey sorry to interrupt super chat uh blix 2003 thanks for two bucks man thank you favorite amish made things click clop clip clop clip clock shoe fly box oh my they god you just, took it from me they just they they knocked that shit out of the park with a lead bat man like dude i can't do it because it's like okay it's like 900 percent like sugar and oh sorry um and just like all these things that you should never have but <laughs> like it when your family is saying like hey we're all going to shady maple for a family dinner on the holidays it's not thanksgiving anymore because we already had thanksgiving dinner but it's between thanksgiving and christmas we're all gonna have a dinner at shady maple, bleh, maple. Sm smorgasbord which true story which i learned from who wants to be a millionaire back in the day which is one of the only places where if you've had i think like a double pie pass you eat for free which i'm like that is a terrible idea terrible idea what's a double pie pass um when you have a certain amount of blockage in your arteries oh, a double the, bypass oh bypass sorry uh yeah um paul finch two dollars says every time i go to the store i buy amish butter what's amish which, butter is, is that it just literally butter, just butter by mamas i'll bet that stuff is creamy as Dude, shit bet apple butter is... like Dude, i don't I'm know all about apple butter. apple butter a pennsylvania thing like me and my brother you gotta went... eat it with bread man and that's well, like again diet thing when we were little kids right our favorite thing used to be apple butter sandwiches we would like literally just make apple butter sandwich we're good that was ready our to lunch. rock ready to roll Chato diabetes 
Uh, every time I go to the store, I buy Amish butter. Every time I go, he just he just, oh, he said just it did twice. it twice. Thank you so much for I guess what was it two dollars each? And then um, man, we are about to rock on on three hours of this. Holy shit! All right, and well, alcohol makes time go fast. There it really was a does. Guy who who said like you guys would be great and Joe would love you again? Guess get us getting on Joe Rogan. Like if this thing flew by in three hours, like a podcast with Joe that sometimes lasts an hour and forty five to two hours, I would be so nervous. Like, well, I mean, I wouldn't be. Oh, here's the thing. Like, okay, full disclosure, I wouldn't be nervous. I would be afraid of embarrassing you. Like in the sense that, like, I would possibly say something. Well, I wouldn't want to say something stupid. I just know that, like, knowing me, I would say something stupid. But like, I know you, like. You're thinking like, well, you, that's insane. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. But it's one of those things of like, I feel like with Joe Rogan, I almost would have to study for that podcast because he knows so much about bit, yeah. so many things. Yeah. Like, he is a really smart guy who knows so much about like things that I haven't even considered because he's had so many guests on. It's the variety of guests that he's had. It's like a guy who never stopped taking classes in college. Exactly. Even if you're not taking a test, you're still learning stuff. Yeah. And how many times of like, the only time where I ever felt where I would be safe on the Joe Rogan... Okay, the only reason that I would not want to be on the Joe Rogan podcast um, is if Eddie Bravo were, like, the co-guest. Because I know I would end up getting in an argument with him. You know, if, if Eddie Bravo was there, I, w I would just... I would close down. You know, my glasses would come off. <laughs> this is, like, a thing. If I don't feel like dealing with somebody, my glasses come off. And my notebook would come out and I'd just start writing. Yeah. That's like a crutch for me because with my glasses off, everything goes underwater. I can only see five inches in front of me and <laughs> I, I go into my own world. So good stuff. And by the way, this is how I work out at, at my gym without my contacts in and no glasses on. Oh, but I don't have glasses on, but I don't have contacts in either because... Yeah. Um, well, it's also, it guarantees that I can't look at anyone in the gym, yeah. but granted, they don't know that, but like I go to the gym in the early afternoon so that they, I beat the why I'm missing like lacrosse team there okay. because I don't want anyone thinking that I'm looking at them because as a guy, you can't look anywhere without thinking that you're looking at somebody that, I don't know. Workforce 520. Thanks for five bucks. Send an Thank email. You. On my Ion, or my Ion in Los Angeles, but I'm willing to travel. Dude, don't drive. Don't, from yeah, LA th to that is for, so be, yeah, long. No. That's but thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you so thank, much. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, there's a chance I'd go to LA, depending on what I'm going to replace uh, Goldie with. And if I buy a Subaru XT, I'm sorry, a Subaru Forester XT, it would probably be SoCal because that's where the good ones are. Um, uh, Daniel Stelzer asked, uh, who's Eddie Bravo and like, let's I've not never... get into it. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, oh, but that was, was that a non pay question or was that? Pay no, it was a non pay. Okay. Uh, all right. So you've um, done David oh, Klein says you've done a lot of different cars, but why never full malaise? Oh, we're going to get into it in our show. Chicago chrome Ooh. cash bumper low compression boat any reason you have just across them they're they're hard to save in the wing dinga world um the thing about malays era stuff is is they don't command a high price on the second market so there's they exist in two forms ones okay two forms and one mythic one the mythic one is, oh, the old lady had one. It's never been driven. It's the little old lady who just drove it to church in the bingo hall, which is the same place. And you have the ones that are just blown out to crap, and they're only worth the scrap metal. And mm -hmm. the other ones are the guys who, it's going to be worth something someday. <laughs> not. Malays era cars are not going to be worth anything ever. I mean, I'll eat my shoe if in like 20 years, suddenly these, these, these crap personal luxury cars, 1974, start being worth something. But they weren't great then. 
You get a lot of car for your money. It's like, yeah, you get a lot for your money at Taco Bell too. It doesn't mean it's a pleasant experience. Yeah. It's I'll, I'll bet I'll bet I'll bet I'll bet Malaysia cars are like chalupas. They're fun for the first three bites, and Malaysia cars are fun for the first three minutes. Do they even make chalupas anymore? Like I don't even think they do. Really? Like it? It literally means like fat girl in Spanish. Like it's a weird thing of just like this. Uh, well i mean it's a like a fried bag. tortilla yeah it's like i i mean i haven't eaten taco bell in years but what's weird about it is that like uh, my uh nephew wanted to go there once so we went there and they had this apple soda and this is back like pre-diet and so i was like i tried it i'm like this is fucking amazing and as a kid i tried to make apple pepsi in a blender with my brother like apple juice and pepsi and it was disgusting how did they get this right like nah. uh but uh Mm, beats uh, uh one guy matt says taco bell does still have chalupas oh news to me it's so bad for you it really so is amazing m beats thank you man hey 10 bucks all right man thank Thanks. you so much which car represents each band journey uh trans am 19 1976 Bee Gees, uh, my favorite band of all time no uh, lie fuck van yeah it's like shag and wagon shag and wagon shag and totally. wagon uh black sabbath uh that's gonna be a fucked up jaguar like black on black uh with um blah 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 blah, blah. uh it's gotta be matte black paint straight piped austin uh poison, poison. uh fiero <laughs> maybe yeah it could be a fiero i mean fiero? i went straight uh, coontosh with yeah. that uh Queen, oh, that's gonna be interesting because I respect oh, Queen. And then okay. the new, the new, uh, the new docs coming out, or the new, uh, biopic. oh yeah, no, well, they're a biopic, yeah, with Rami Malek from uh, uh, Mr. Robot. Queen, he was a car guy. I mean, I'm gonna go with like a Rolls, like like James May's Mulliner Park Ward sort of thing. Oasis, Rot, <laughs> Citroen, uh, maybe, um, uh. Persia. Like a like a UK what's a fucking punter's car? Where's Tom Clark when you need him? Tell me about it. <laughs> um uh, or I'm gonna go with the car in uh the the, uh, the enemy's uh music video for was it a Cortina or was it like a, a, a UK spec escort? It's definitely gonna be like, like a UK like. spec Ford. Uh Nick's going to P P P P P. Alex Ross, thanks for a $50 bill, man. All right. You guys are awesome. First chat I've ever been able to catch. Love cars, but can't think of a question not already asked. So, Blade Runner 2049. I know you guys liked it. What is the best scene and why? Keep up the strong work. We'll, we'll pose this question to Nick when he gets back. My favorite scene from Blade Runner 2021. Okay. There's... I'm going to give you two. The first one is when Love is casually having her nails done while commanding missiles to fire. I think that was a well-edited sequence shot of the casual nature of her versus the reality of K. Constant K. The scene of twenty twenty one. I like the the bit with the holographic. Uh, uh, Frankie boy, guys. Gosh down. Why, why? I can't. I remember. Uh, oh, Frank Sinatra, right. Um, got a really interesting question here. What was it? I'm going to go with the Frank Sinatra holographic scene. So I think that's my favorite cat. scene. Love cars, but I can't think of a question. Now, right? So Blade Runner 2049, I know you guys like it. Best scene and why I keep up the strong work. Okay, okay, so if you haven't seen Blade Runner 2049, uh, just skip ahead like literally like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but there's the scene in the snow before Harrison Ford goes in to meet his real daughter and um oh yeah it's the scene where ryan gosling is 
I forget the exact line, but it was basically to the effect of, like, where he really realizes that, like, he's not the special one. Like, the reason why Blade Runner 2049 is genius is that, like, it's the hero's journey where at the end of the hero's journey, he realizes he's not the hero. Like, because the hero's journey is about one person being the chosen one and at the end of that journey he realizes he's not the chosen one and the chosen one was actually in front of his face the whole time and so it's a brilliant movie yeah. and i wish like roger deakins after like 17 nominations finally won the oscar for cinematography for that film and it was a deserving film after lensing the greatest movies <laughs> of like the past like decade and change of like oh brother we're out there uh fucking shawshank redemption uh skyfall like all these movies these amazing films that he's lensed and finally he got the oscar for it so roger deakins cheers dodge yeah. journey oh sorry dodge journey uh thanks man that was Work that was an us. excellent question i just wish this theater that i saw at 2049 turned down the volume a little bit um have you ever seen a 2049 yeah i mean it's i literally thought it was the best movie that came out last year um yeah. and i saw every best picture nominee and my uh pick for best picture um like if it were up to me would have been the shape of water and it did win but i didn't pick it i picked get out because i thought like there was going to be an upset and mm -hmm. like whatever um but blade runner 2049 is one of the like and you have to understand that it's an atmospheric film like it's not you're not going to get this this film and the one thing that I would change about that movie is not reveal Harrison Ford in any of the promotional material, mm. because if you didn't know he was going to be in the movie, it would have been such a better experience yeah. in the theater. And also, like, I mean, I watched it on home video, like I rented it on YouTube and watched it on the like TV and it wasn't the same experience. But, you know, like beggars can't be choosers like i didn't go to see it when it was actually in theaters thinking i had more time so right. meh. There, there's some small questions that went by mm. um dodge journey if a grand caravan and avenger had a child together true um, i agree with you workforce 520 and thanks, beats thanks for the 499 oh, okay. sorry about that go ahead, say ten dollars where are y'all philip roth fans any thoughts on his passing did philip roth die when did he pass who's philip roth um he is an author who did a novel um he did the human stain he did um proof which is about a math each oh, of these I, I, were turned into I movies i saw proof on an off-broadway play in undergrad yes and that's we went, Philip we went Roth out to New York to see it. So I know proof. Um, thoughts on his passing? It's always a shame to see like a good author leave us. So yeah, it's it sad. Is after midnight, I think we got to wrap this. All right, up. I got to pee like none other. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. So please don't send any more questions. Please, uh, please don't send any more. And I know chats. that this is on a delay so once you get this on the delay see like another one popped up but like once you get this please no more questions we won't be able to get to you we have to go to bed because we have to go to carlisle tomorrow um but uh demon x90 can you please find and review a three rotor three or rx7 or rx8 i just built one and i would love to hear your thoughts on a three rotor um I mean, if we get the chance to actually do one, I can't imagine that we wouldn't do it, but it's hard to know because, you know, it's all dependent on people actually offering that to us. Um, Miles, thank you for the $2. Um, interested in reviewing a 1968 Ford Torino GT428CJ. Send it to the email regularcars at gmail.com put the car and your location in the subject heading and please do it that way um blitzkrieg 2003 five dollars so you can split a bologna sandwich and a six pack of yingling thanks for years of enjoyment you guys are doing great work in keeping it human thank you so much for the uh compliments and for the money um elijah ellis i'd send an email about my 99 expedition but the last kid i loaned it to trashed the transmission after driving it like a race car let that be a lesson to not loan it to people at all ever um 
and uh so yeah no more questions and that is literally the end of the line for us this is a record-breaking podcast in terms of length for us yeah and also in terms of like us staying awake and alive so thank you so much for hanging out with us Thanks, and for man. dealing with us on the live stream and all the craziness i'm nick i'm brian and, and this that was is three hours yeah that was three hours this is the rcr after dark podcast have a great week and hopefully if you're in the area for carlisle tomorrow Yep. you'll come and see us at our tent whatever blah 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 you'll you can find us bye cars and coffee cars and coffee cars yeah. and carlisle ford nationals tomorrow yeah, let's do it see you get later guys bye Take carlisle easy, guys. pennsylvania where nothing's typing oh wrong window Uh, do you have to use a shower? Nope. I had a shower before I came here. So uh, that's like one shower covers me for an entire 24 hours in my head. So, yeah. Mm. I will. Um, do you mind if I use the um, desktop to. But it's just gonna be that. Well, I feel like going down and do the shower because all right, then yeah. All right, um oh because it'll only take me all of like ten minutes for each I think it actually might be kind of disgusting how much money we made in that one three hours. Yeah.
mean, um, I mean, it's not like I don't want to make money. No, but I understand. There was a person in the comments who said, like, maybe you do like one podcast that's for super chat and one that isn't. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, I try to like strike a balance in the sense that like I try to like snapshot the questions that maybe aren't super chat questions so that like we're getting to people who aren't necessarily like tipping us to get you know noticed um because that's what oh, wait we're still going are we did i did i say like did i not turn this off News to me. So. Stop streaming unless I click start again. Yeah, Jared Shevel says it's still going, boys. Oh, <laughs> hi there, you silly goof. Yeah, there it is. Well, <laughs> You're still live. Yep. Yeah. Did you see, they live with a Roddy Piper. No, but I saw the clips of it. It's like it has one of the greatest fight scenes of all time. It really is just ugh. Matthew R says we expected it to go all night. <laughs> um, I gotta dis I gotta disassemble these microphones and everything because Nick has to sleep on this couch tonight. Which is fine. I don't mind couches. I fucking am a huge fan of couches um, and futons. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Regular hidden camera reviews. Blue Gasm says it's not like I don't want to make money. Well, yeah, that that's that's like the whole thing, right? I mean, I love answering the questions. I mean, you're keeping our our budget well filled. But it's a question like how much do you want the flow of the show to go versus how much you want to give uh the donators the time and attention uh they paid for. Yeah, like, our thing is, like, we want to respect everybody's conversation. And notice how this conversation is still going. He's off mic, but I'm still listening to him. No, 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 like... I'm taking your seat now. Yeah, all right, that's fine. <laughs> no, here's the thing. As we want to respect everyone's contribution to the... You can uh, pull the mic toward you or move it. Or, we want to respect everyone's contribution... You're way too close to the mic. Oh, all right. We want to respect everyone's contribution to the chat and to the podcast. And so that's why we pay attention to everybody who sends a super chat. But, like... Like, it's partly that also we don't want to turn it into, like, the Super Chat hour. So I screenshot some comments that aren't uh, Super Chat related so that we get some questions in there that, like, people aren't paying to have answered. Because, like, at the end of the day, like, I don't know. If I were a fan, I would want to just be able to know that if I go into a podcast live stream, I would be able to ask a question and know that there's a reasonable non zero percent chance that it's going to get answered. But at the end of the day, also, like if I were someone who's contributing money, I would want, you know, in a very George Miller way to be witnessed. And right. so, like, I understand the duality of it. Like, I understand why this is kind of, like, weird. And why, you know, I don't know. Us discovering Super Chat, like, it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in the sense that, like, our cards will remain guzzled up um, for the time being. But it's also, like, a curse in the sense that, like, if we come back from the weekend and we have something to discuss, like, maybe the conversation will get derailed. And so that's why I was going to suggest that, like, okay, if the average RCR podcast is an hour and a half, I would recommend that, like, the super chat be resolved to the final half hour of it solely so that we would get rid of, like, the posting questions in the subreddit thing because that's not, like, you know, people hardly post it. But if you have a question, you could put it here for the super chat half hour, you know, and it's suddenly where if we're doing a hour and a half super or hour and a half chat anyway, you know, if we have stories to tell that day, um, then it can go on for however long we need it to be. And then once that's off, we'll be like, OK, super chat questions like have at it. But also, you know. 
maybe some of the questions that'll be answered will be non-Super Chat. Like, I don't really know, because we're still figuring this out as we go along, trying to figure out what people like and what people don't like and what people will tolerate and what people won't tolerate. And the thing is that, like, we don't want to mm-hmm. piss anyone off. Like, that's the big thing of, like, it's so easy to make people upset, but, like, I don't want to make people upset. And I don't want people to feel like they're not being valued just because they don't have, like, whatever to contribute. And so, I, ah, I don't know. This is all, like, me projecting. Like, this is all me projecting because I was that kid who, like, you know, wanted Senpai to, like, fucking notice him. And it was like, what are you going to do? Like, it's just... Uh, <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's not a big deal. It's not it like we it's not a big deal. We're we're Go to we're bed, doing... guys. Tomorrow's going to be a motherfucker. Yeah, it is. Tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? We are going to be fine. We are going to be fine. We're going to get coffee from Basil Lowe says it's okay, guys. A lot of YouTubers are still adjusting to the little chat versus super chat feature and how to incorporate it into their channels. It would be nice if there was simply a toggle where I could turn it off and on yeah. rather than having to do two separate uh, videos themselves with one it turned off and the other turned on. Um, probably, I think, this is just me spitballing, um, we could do a half an hour of us just having uh <laughs> here they come again <laughs> we forgive you with money <laughs> have have all my dollars from google option reward app thanks man oh. Ava says thanks man. We, we can't go into this again yeah no, um no, what, a, what a problem to have right yeah no um, hell of a day uh i admit i paid up because i couldn't afford it just wanted my question to be answered because i could have because i could afford it yeah yeah just wanted to question the answers. Um, don't feel bad. We'll fund you not for attention, but because we believe in what you're doing. Don't read or respond. Uh, RCR podcast. Ask RCR hours. Uh, like we have a more understanding audience than most. Like mm-hmm. I look at other YouTubers out there who like their audience is literally like a Star Wars audience of like nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. Yeah, and like I find that. RCR fans are very like accommodating in the sense that like one of the comments that like I'll always take with me is the idea that like um, someone once said like stop apologizing for everything Mm. and it's just like kind of my natural inclination like and this is in one of my diary videos of like where I apologize for the last diary video um, because I thought no one wanted to hear it and it's because i Part of me is like still that like seventeen year old kid who wants to hear. I don't want to hear it, but I still hear that like bad thing of like you know that kernel of discontent. And so I don't know. Mm. But in the interest of not keeping this going all night, uh, yeah, let let's wrap this. Let's up. wrap this up and go to bed. Yeah, and, uh, it's Ford Nationals tomorrow. Yeah, Ford Nationals tomorrow. If you're out there, come see us. If not, whatever. Stopping streaming now.